This is Bruce Ruffer, and this is the moment you've all been waiting for. It's time for the MMA Halls! Curtis interview tonight, UFC 276 preview, Luke Rockhold was pregnant, let's talk about it with the MMA Ho! Welcome friends, welcome, welcome to our Wednesday show, it's good to be here, it's good to be alive, it's good to be... Wonderful, wonderful. How's it going, friends? Uh, yes, UFC 276 Fight Week. We are very close. Tomorrow we're going to be showing. Uh, we'll we'll do the audio for the press conference. Give our live reaction. It's going to be crazy. I just listened to Sean Strickland's <laughs> media scrum twice. I, I listened to it. I was at the gym laughing my ass off the first time. I'm like, I gotta I gotta let Jesse hear this, and we we ran it back. The guy is out of his mind, absolutely out of his mind. I can't wait to see what he has to say tomorrow night or tomorrow afternoon during the uh, press conference. We'll get into all that in a little bit. We got a great show, a jam-packed show for you tonight. Yes, Luke Rockhold apparently was pregnant at one time. I mean, I, I don't know, an abortion, I don't know what's going on here. We'll talk about that craziness. We have UFC 276, and we have tonight on the MMA Holes for the first time ever. On the MMA holes, a bantamweight savage, a man who just came off a massive knockout in his last fight. This man is a stud. This man fought for CES. Yes, I know you guys are familiar with CES. Big fan of that promotion over there. This man's name is Tony Gravely. Let's go, baby. Yes. Tony, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Well... This is a flying circus we got going on over here in the interwebs, and it's it's a pleasure to have you on. I have been meaning to have you on our show for a while because we used to cover CES when we were living in New York a couple years back. We would travel over to uh, you know New England, Connecticut, where we were all over the place, and we saw you fight at CES, kicking ass over there, beating the crap out of Chris Moutinho, for God's sakes. And here you are in the UFC, just doing your thing, coming off two fight a uh, two fight win streak. How does it feel to be now, Is I guess, a veteran in the UFC? Yeah, honestly, it, it, still, it still feels unreal in a way. You know, it's one of those things that you, you know, you, you've looked, looked forward to, to doing for a long time and like now it's here. So you spent so much time not being here that, you know, it takes some time to, to really kind of understand where you're at in a way, you know, but I, I like, I like that I, you know, I, I like the fact that in my head, I think about, um, you know, I like to think about the same drive I had before I even got here. I try to keep that. So I try to kind of keep my mind away from thinking I'm, you know, made it or anything like that, you know. It's got to be wild. And now I just, I was listening to a couple of interviews trying to get some uh, backstory. And I found out that while well, I listened to your last uh, media scrum talking about ATT over there training, still with ATT, right? American Top Team? Yes, sir. And now going into a gym like American Top Team, I mean, there are so many like top tier athletes. Was it intimidating when you first walked into that gym? Like, holy shit, I'm surrounded by some real savages. No, honestly, it was the opposite. I knew what I was getting myself into, and I was like, "Hey, I mean, if I, if I want to be the best, I gotta train with you know the best." So you know, going in, that that was actually the reason why you know uh, I moved down here. But um, you know, in a way, in, in a way, kind of you know, especially like your first couple of sparring sessions, getting to go with these new people, you know, 
um, you know, now now you've gone with them and it's a little bit different because you've gotten used to each other in somewhat of a way. But yeah, that, that first sparring session with each of these, you know, top tier athletes that, that everyone knows was, you know, it, 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 you make sure, it makes you nervous. Sure. I mean, I'd be shit my pants. I tell you what, I don't know how you guys do it as it is, but switching gyms, it's like, it's kind of like you're going to school at a place, you're comfortable with all your, your classmates, and then all of a sudden you're like, ah, it's time to move, and then you go to an even bigger, crazier school, and where you learn more stuff over there, it's got to be overwhelming. Did you have any teammates or, or friends that were in that gym already to kind of soften the blow, or you just went head first? Um, you know, kind of just went head first, and, and actually one of the ways I got here is um, uh, one of my buddies I wrestled with in college uh, named Carter Downs, he, he's from Jupiter, Florida, which isn't too far from here, and his buddy, um, who he went to school with, uh, his name is Mike Lombardo, he fights for Bellator, and um, he, uh, he actually trains at ATT, so it kind of was like, a, a put a, kind of a little word in, in a way, um, you know, who I was, et cetera. And I came down for a weekend and, um, you know, tri like kind of did like a tryout. And I was like, this is, this is where I need to be. This is, this is like MMA heaven. And is that what it's like now you're already in the UFC and they say, Hey man, you, you gotta still try out to be in the gym. Is that how it works? Uh, as, as being like someone that's already an athlete going into ATT. Yeah. No, well, actually, um, you know, I had been before all the COVID stuff, and COVID kind of made it a little bit different, you know, okay. as far as um, letting people in and how it started. But no, if you, um, you know, when I first came in, it was a little, little different, and now they they treat it more not just the gym, but like a professional sports team. So, you know, it's it's a lot. Um, it's nothing but professional athletes in there, or you know, high level amateurs that are looking to become professionals. So. Um, it's not really like a they they had at one point kind of like a tryout in a way for um, almost like to bring up like a, through an amateur type thing. Okay. And they still kind of have something like that called a developmental program. But if you already you know are, are a pro fighter, most of the time it's kind of a word of mouth. Um, you talk with uh, Richie, who's a, uh, one of the main guys at the gym, and he he uh, you know kind of gives you the red light or the green light. Gotcha. Wow. So were you worried? Were you worried at one point like, hey, man, I don't know if this is going to work out or did you just like pick up? Did you move before you went to this gym or you went to the gym and then moved? I went to the so I kind of went to the gym for like uh, a week. The first time I went for like about a week to see my buddy. And um, so I was already down this area. So I went to the gym. Um, I went back. So this was right before the contender series. So this mm -hmm. is before I was even in the UFC. OK. And so I'd kind of been, you know, I knew at some point I would probably have to move from the gym that I was at, just um, needing better practice partners. Obviously, putting yourself in a situation where, um, you know, I'm enhancing my chance of becoming a world champion, you know. So, um, you know, I did that and I came back, I think, one more week. So it was like two, two individual weeks over the span of maybe almost a year. And then, um, and then I finally I moved down uh, June of I think 2020. So that must have been really wild. You came off the win in CES, um, and you go to the Contender Series, and you're saying now you're in the midst of switching switching gyms before you even got into the Contender Series. Correct? Did I get that correctly? No, no. Oh, okay. Actually, I, so I was. I, I think I kind of I kind of messed up um, okay. the timeline. But the timeline was actually pretty short. You know, I, um, my my old gym I fought through the contender series. I had went to ATT to kind of visit um, and see my buddy um, one time before we moved, before I actually moved. So this was before contender series, which was probably, I think at this point, this was probably like July, 2019. Uh, fought contender series, uh, I think it was maybe like August or September of 2019. Okay. And then a pro debut and um, I mean I'm a pro debut. My UFC debut in January twenty. Would that be twenty twenty? Yeah, uh, twenty. 20? Yeah, twenty twenty. Yeah, January twenty fifth. Yeah. Yes. So after my debut, between between my debut and about June is when I moved. Okay. So I moved in June. Oh, okay. So so there's kind of a, a lot short of... timeline in a way. Gotcha. And, and so there was some moving parts over there. You get the finish in the contender series. Now, what's interesting about your contender series story? 
a lot of people, it, I feel like it's weird. Like, I feel like the Contender Series is such a fast pass into the UFC. A lot of guys are, like, skipping the line, not doing the regional thing. But you were doing your thing. Like, you earned your stripes. And then by the time you got to the Contender Series, you kind of been there, done that. So do you feel that gives you an advantage going into the Contender Series with all that experience compared to Joe Blow that has, is that like, six and one going in there? That's exactly how I saw it. You know, I, I had I had fought so many people. And the way I saw it at that level was I looked at it two ways. Um, when you wrestle, you know, I know this is completely different. This is fighting. But um, wrestling, when I wrestled, you know, you, you would it would be pretty your your matches were pretty close together. You know, it wasn't like one match a year, or two matches a year. So, um, you know, I kind of I had a lot. I had kind of had that mentality. And in my first couple of fights, I, I was just pretty much wrestling people. You know, I was out just to win. I uh, didn't take any damage. Was able to get some wins. So, um, you know, I honestly had about a career's worth. The average person's career's worth their entire career from beginning to end. Uh, just before my UFC start, you know. So when I went in there, um, when I fought um, Ray Rodriguez, we were we were two people that were, um, you know, kind of in the same scenario. Both had like you know, almost twenty fights. So um, honestly, in my opinion, that I thought that could have been a um, could have been a, a UFC fight itself. Sure. But um, you know, it, it ended up being a contender series fight. But you know, with that being said, although that's that's experience. The, my opponent was also experienced, you know, so it was two experienced fighters, but, um, you know, but it comes down to at the end of the day, who's going to work the hardest, who, who's going to do what they need to do first. And, uh, you know, fortunately, I was able to do what I needed to do, got the finish and got the contract. It's, it's wild. Did you feel I noticed with the contender series, I find the contender series like fascinating. Um, and going into this thing, there are a lot of matchups where you feel, hey, the UFC is, they want this guy or this gal in. Did you feel any of that? Were you the guy that the UFC wanted in, or did you feel your opponent was the guy that the UFC was kind of checking out a little bit more? Did you feel it was like an even matchup going in there? I don't know. I think it was um, It was probably an, e an even matchup, you know, as far as I know. I mean, we, we um, both had a lot of experience, both, you know, experienced enough to have been in the UFC. So, um, you know, I, I'm not really sure. I think they just just knew that one of us, whoever won, would probably end up getting signed in a way. Now, being a UFC fighter has got to be the coolest fucking thing in the world. It really does. Like, I mean, you're a professional athlete. You, you were a professional athlete. And, and, and here you are now a UFC, like the top tier, highest of high UFC athlete over here. And then you're coming off a massive knockout. I mean, that knockout was like a statement. A lot of people were kind of doubting you in certain situations. People were doubting your, your grappling, which I was having arguments on air with, with some people like, ah, this guy, I've seen him in the regional scene. The guy can fucking grapple. And you made a statement. You went out there. You took this guy out quickly and swiftly. How does it feel? Do you feel like that was a signature moment in your career? Um, uh, you know, possibly. I honestly think like every every current fight or current thing is usually the thing that sticks out the most. You know, unless you have some crazy highlight reel KO. But um, you know, it, it it I guess it does. You know, it, it almost feels like it didn't happen in a way. You know, mm -hmm. it happened so fast, and it's so weird to think about that it, it um that it was still this month. You know, it seems like so far away, but you know, it, it's one of those things where um. You know, I, I went in expecting to have to do everything. I expected to, to make it, a, to grapple, to strike, to, you know, everything. But, um, you know, luckily the first, you know, combination I, I threw um, did the job, you know. So it was it was like one of those things where I expected more and I would like to have had more fight. But at the end of the day, if you can go in there at this level and for one, get a win, or two, get you know, get a win quickly is is you know the best thing that can happen. It's it's got to be so weird. Like you train so long to fight, and then you go out there and spark a guy in the first round. It's like that was it. Like it's like watching a movie that's quick. Like like that. That's also do things. Does things like taste better afterwards like there's like it's like holy shit i barely got scratched in this thing like do you feel euphoric after it or do you have that empty feeling like you said is it more of a weird letdown um it's it's a little bit of both you know the the moment right after it happens is always the most euphoric it, it's a it's a it's a part where you just i don't know like 
you just can't control yourself sometimes, you know, like, I don't know what I was doing afterwards, you know, like, you, but, but it's one of those things that it feels great. And then, you know, when you look back as a fighter, you always want some, some resistance, you know, that's what feels good, the resistance. But at the end of the day, um, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not, I didn't become a fighter just to beat Johnny Munoz. You know, I, I want to beat everybody. I'm, I'm here to win and beat everybody. So, um, you know, with that being said, I have to kind of, you know, it it was done, it happened, and now you know, looking looking forward to whatever's next. I noticed Al Jermaine Sterling said something really nice after your win too. He went on Twitter and and basically put some respect on your name here, like you've made a statement. How did it feel like hearing your peers giving you congratulations for that win? It's pretty cool. I mean, especially um, someone that you know, he's the champ, so. You know, especially from that, it's it's a pretty cool, uh, you know, just being acknowledged is pretty cool. You know, it's funny. Every time we have a guest on this show, we are the most biased show in the world. Like, we are so unprofessional. We have a guest on, bang, I'm the biggest fan in the world. Like, Chris Curtis is coming on next. If Chris Curtis fights someone, I don't give a fuck. I'm a Chris Curtis fan. Now I'm a Tony Gravely fan over here. And I feel I it. Uh, we're, we're number one. Let me know in the chat if you're a Tony Gravely fan, for God's sakes. I do want to ask you... Um, Am I saying your name properly? Properly is it gravelly, gravely? How do we say it? Yeah, so it is gravelly. You know, most of, a lot of time it is pronounced gravely. And if I didn't know what it was, I would see it too. But I also have family that pronounce it both ways as well. But um, where I'm from, we say gravelly. I noticed in the chat, people are on board dropping ones over there. But that one girl, this young lady that's a member of our show, I'm very, uh, you know, I like her a lot, but I don't like her tonight. She says she doesn't know yet if she is on the Tony Gravely train. What would you say to that person? <laughs> I mean, you know, there's at the end of the day, I, I'm out here to be who I am, do what I do. And, you know, if, if people want to support me, I, 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 I love it. I truly appreciate it. If not, um, I feel like it's only a matter of time for you. I'll grow on you. <laughs> I tell you what, you seem like a sweetheart. We just barely just spoke, and it seems like you're one of the nicest guys. How do you channel that energy when you, the, the cage door closes, bam, you see your opponent? I mean, you look like you're, you're going to kill somebody when you're in there. I've seen the focus in your face. How do you flip that switch? Honestly, I don't know. I, I think some people are kind of born with it. Some people, everybody sees things differently. People see it as a game of almost tag depending on your your the way you the way you uh you know approach the fight you know people that stay on the outside it's almost like tag some people see it as a wrestling match you know for me honestly you know i see it like a like a like a fight for life or death in a way you know um you know at the end of the day um you know realistically the chances of somebody actually dying are pretty low but but I have to, I have to win. I have to make money. I have to provide for my family. He has to do the same. So I have to do whatever I need to do to uh, get my hand raised and and you know provide for my family. So it's one of those things that and you know, there's no hard feelings. It's just something we both signed up to do. Um, I have nothing but respect for whoever I'm fighting. You know his corners, everything like that. But um, once it's you know once once it's it's we're in the cage. It's you know, it's it's completely different. It's no disrespect, but it's just doing whatever I need to do to win. And afterwards, I'll, I'll treat you with just the same respect, whether you beat me or I beat you. Have you ever had an opponent where like, oh, my God, I can't stand this guy. I need to beat the shit out of this guy. Have you ever had one opponent like that? No, honestly, <laughs> the first person who I kind of felt like that was, was Chris Moutinho. Um, because at the time, I guess like I, I don't know. It wasn't anything like I don't think it was like anything too personal. But you know, he was fighting for. I was defending my title against him, and uh, that was probably the first time that you know it was a lot of trash talk between like uh, my buddies and him and and all the New England guys. So that was like one of those ones. But but actually, honestly, he's a super cool guy, and we we follow each other on Instagram and and uh, Facebook and stuff. And he's actually a real cool dude. So um, you know, it goes to show that. Some people just maybe putting on somewhat of a, you know, not necessarily a facade, but, you know, for, to sell the fight, but not everybody's exactly how you see them, um, you know, on social media. I was actually in the building for that fight. To finish Chris Moutinho, unfortunately, he's not with the UFC anymore, but he did have that massive moment where he fought Sean O'Malley. He jumps in there off the couch, is like, let's go, became a rock star after that. And his face was made of stone, but yet you had the ability to put this guy down. 
How does that make you feel when you see a guy like Sean O'Malley, who has, I mean, who's fighting this weekend, he's got this massive hype behind him, he's smoking fools left and right, and he can't beat that Chris Moutinho, but you know that you were able to take that guy out. Does that make you a little excited to charge up the rankings? Yeah, a, a part of me does, but you can't really necessarily do fight math, you know, like that. It doesn't always work like that. Different styles end up in different positions, but with that being said, I still think um that i would beat sean o'malley my buddy actually said after that fight he was like you should you should call him out you should say oh it, it uh you hit him like such and such amount of times or or whatever and could knock him out and i knocked him out you know on the ground doing a split or something like that but <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not a trash talker so i you know and i also at that time i'd also like you know started to like chris so you know i, I didn't want to do anything like that but yeah, you know, I, I would, you know, absolutely every, I think every single, especially every grappler, everybody that can grapple would love to fight Sean O'Malley in the bantamweight division. It's, it's a division where it's hard to get by without being able to grapple unless you're strategically being put in this position, you know. Yeah, I tell you what, Sean O'Malley, I, I, I've been up and down with how I feel about Sean O'Malley. In the beginning, when he was in the Contender Series, I was like, I love this kid. And then he had a couple of fights in the UFC, and he was kind of whiny and complaining, and is fragile, it was weird. And then he starts smoking people again, and I had a lot more respect for him. And, and now he's like a great businessman. He's doing everything right when it comes to creating this image and his persona. So now I have nothing but respect for the guy. But that is, I mean, the question is the grappling. I mean, you would have to think there's na navigating him around guys like Marab Devalishvili, for God's sakes. It sounds like a nightmare for him. And a guy like you, too, I mean, would you stand and trade with a guy like Sean? Or like you said, would you just take the man down? I mean, realistically, I would just take him down, you know. That's a smart thing to do. I'm not out here to see who's toughest and and real and honestly if we trade it blow for blow i'm pretty sure i hit harder than him but that's not the name of the game you know my dad would hate to see me fight like that you know he he definitely doesn't want me to fight like that my family doesn't want to see me get you know in a slugfest win or lose but you know if that time ever came where i had to do that I, i'm down for it but realistically um I, i'd take him down and, and take him where where i have the biggest advantage and he has the biggest disadvantage a guy like you with all the tools and you do have serious power, you have a bunch of finishes on your resume, you can submit people, you can pretty much do it anywhere. I think bantamweight's got to be on notice. Do you ever worry though like like you ever say to yourself like why am I in the why am I in the bantamweight division? Like this is like the this is like the worst division for me to be in right now. It's ridiculously good. Honestly, yeah, I do sometimes. I do that. My wife actually does too. She's like, "Why don't you just go to You should you should try to go down to flyweight." And realistically, I, I probably could, and it's still not off the table. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm always the smallest guy when I, when I, um, you know, when we fight. I'm, I'm usually I come in sometimes. At, I think the last fight I came in at like 145 on the fight on fight night. You know, so, but it feels good. I, f I feel good, and I know that like my body is at its I feel like at its peak when it's mm -hmm. like this. You know, so that's the that's the only thing that's keeping me from from cutting down but i keep saying the same thing I, you know i'd have to do like a kind of like a test cut to see you know how i felt so it's not completely off the table but and also it's kind of hard to want to do that when you're having success you know mm -hmm. and and i think that i can still be the best at at, at 135 as well so um but at the end of the day you know i, I have the option to i guess but um it's not completely off the table but as of now i'm, I'm planning on sticking to band and weight it's interesting that you say that. Like, there was like, I mean, like Rob Font, for instance. Like, I see him and I'm like, man, if he could somehow get down, I mean, he'd be smoking people. I feel like sometimes fighters get to a certain stage where you fight in the top five guys and they're so big and strong where it's like you almost feel like you plateaued. I'm not saying that's going on with you. I mean, you're finishing people at your weight class. So that's, that's not necessarily a thing yet. But it's interesting that you say that you are actually thinking about going to 125. So if you've never fought at that weight class. No, I, I fought at uh, I fought a catchweight at 130 before. That was the lowest I had ever been. Uh, didn't feel too bad, but it was also like my second or third pro fight. So uh, that was a long time ago. Um, but I, I I bet I could still make it. You know, I could definitely. I'd have I'd have to make. The biggest thing is making. I'd have to make a huge lifestyle change because I I love food. I eat a lot, and I would have to really change. You know, it's not that I eat horrible or anything, but I really have to like change my 
my normal everyday body would have to shrink about 10 pounds, you know, I think in order to be as efficient as I should be. So, um, you know, it, it's a lot into it. Just just thinking about committing to it like gives me like anxiety <laughs> because I remember what it felt like cutting down to 125 in college to wrestle, but I also cut weight incorrectly. You know, wasn't you know when you're it's completely different when you're just a college kid compared to um, now you're doing this for a career. So, sure. um, you know, I, I understand that I would take it a lot more serious and do the correct things, but I'm still uh, you know hesitant. Well, now you're still in bantamweight, so let's talk about the bantamweight over here. I'm going to throw some names at you, and I want to see how do you think you would match up against these guys. We're going to throw, we're going to go right to the top of the heap. I'm going to throw a guy named Peter Yan, the guy that that threw the knee, the the controversial knee, but looks very beatable now as Aljamain Sterling showed the recipe to success against Yan. How do you fare against a guy like that? Honestly, I, I don't know. I mean, he he's a tough guy. He he's. You know, you, you you saw where he had trouble in these situations, but those situations that he had trouble in um, are kind of specifically situations that Aljamain Sterling's really, really good at, too. So it's not like he's weak here. Um, Aljamain's just good at those positions, right? So it's not like he's horrible. Um, but I, I've actually got the chance to grapple with him before. Um, he came to ATT before the, for, before the fight, leading up to the fight where he, where he landed the knee. And uh, you know we got we got to do some grappling rounds and stuff. He's he's a good grappler. He he and his cardio is really good. Mm-hmm. And I, I never got to spar him, but I watched him spar. And it, he's so surgical on his feet. You know, it's no wasted energy. Everything looks really clean. So you know, I, I don't know. Obviously, obviously his striking is better than mine. Uh, my wrestling is better than his. So you never know. And what did you think about the rematch between the two? Do you, like some people are yelling and screaming that they think Jan won that fight. Other people think that you know Aljo, who did win that fight, uh, won. What would you say? Do you think it was close, or do you think they got it right? It was close, and if I remember correctly, I thought I remember saying that I thought they were going to give it to Aljo. Um, just a lot of control, you know. It was a lot of control. So um, I don't remember exactly which rounds and exactly what what parts I remember like each winning. But I thought I remembered um, thinking that they were going to give the algebraic. Okay. I want to ask you about, we, I brought up Marab earlier. He fascinates me. The guy, talk about cardio. This guy's cardio is insane. And he's fighting um, Jose Aldo. Well, what a crazy matchup that is. Yeah. Is that not, is it weird having Aldo hanging out in your weight class? Like, bro, get back, go back up there. What are you doing down here? Do you feel that way or no? <laughs> yeah, it's like, man, I have no clue how he, when, when he first, when they first said he was going to come down to 135, I was like, there's no way he he's not gonna make weight, and if he does, he's gonna be horrible, and he's gonna be like, "This is I'm not doing this anymore." But he comes down. I mean, he looks he still looks bad when he gets on the scale, but when he performs, it's you know not as good as when he was at 145, but it's still really really good, you know. And it, it it's dangerous, you know. That is that is scary to have somebody like that, you know, in your weight class, especially somebody that you you know look at like kind of looked up to in a way and and really watched grow throughout the, throughout the year so it's, it's crazy i can't believe he pulled it off i, I honestly can't believe it. and he, lo- he does like you said he looks great it's it's wild yeah. I, and the, the first time he did it i thought he had aids though i, I really thought he might have had <laughs> hiv or something but he doesn't thank god right yeah he looked he looked <laughs> sick he looked really sick yeah and uh so i mean we got some crazy guys up there some really cool matchups what do you see for yourself, like breaking the top 15? What do you think you have to do to get there? You're on a two-fight win streak coming off a big knockout. Uh, like what would have to happen? One, two fights, or knockouts, finishes? What, what would you think? I mean, at, at this weight class with all these guys, you know, at the end of the day, you just have to keep winning fights in general, you know. And I think, I think not, not just wins, but finishes, like you said, because anybody can, not anybody, but, you know, people can squeak by with, with, with just wins. But people want to see people really going out there and doing their best, displaying all of their skills in order to win and finish this fight so they can prove that they're, um, they're you know, amongst the best. They're one of the best in the world. So um, at the end of the day, I just need to keep winning fights. I need to keep doing my best to finish fights, um, being smart IQ wise, just continuing to grow every day. So, I, you know, I think I'm heading in the right direction 
Um, you know, it could be a couple, it could be a couple, maybe two, three more fights could be, um, you know, I get a short notice fight or some, they offer me somebody that's got a number beside their name, you know? So, you know, one of those two things have to happen, I, I guess, as far as I know. I tell you, you seem like the type of guy, just especially coming off that last win. It was like such juice after that thing. By the way, did you get a bonus for that win? I didn't. I didn't get a bonus. Um, they gave it to uh, Ode Osborne and oh. um, one of the girl fights. Uh, I think it was a girl from Brazil. She uh, submitted a girl, and uh, they gave those two. And then the um, I think the they gave fight of the night to maybe it was like. Mike Trezano and um, I can't remember the other guy's name. Does that but not... yeah, I, I didn't get one. And then the following week, they gave out like nine. <laughs> like everybody that got a finish. So it, it's crazy, man. I, I, I was like, you know, it, it kind of, well, it does suck. But at the end of the day, you know, I was like, I, I've done all I could do. I mean, I did all I could do. And that's that's all I could do. So <laughs> it is wild. I was literally just gonna say that. Like they 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 were, they were giving bonuses out like crazy. That wild card, and 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 here I'm thinking about like your knockout was just in, it was insane. Like that was just nuts. And they couldn't throw a bonus your way. I, I heard Izzy talking about fighter pay and and how he was saying how um you know things need to change when you make it into any other pro sport. You're set. Like, you're good to go. Not like, I mean, not like you guys are making peanuts, but still at the same time, you should be making way more. And and, and it's it's wild how you have to be, fucking, like, looking for bonuses and this and that in order to make these these nice paychecks. It's, it's crazy. I don't want to jump down that, that fighter pay thing, but what are your thoughts? Like, when you don't get a bonus like that, it's like, fuck, what do I got to do? Or, you know, just right back to the drawing board. You know, it's at the end of the day, I, I'm out there to, to finish the guys however way, you know, and and I, I put in the extra work to get those bonuses, you know. So, um, but all I can do is keep doing my best to to do it, and you know, eventually, I'll get another. I know I'll get another, you know. So just go out and do it again, and hope that he's in a really good mood that <laughs> night, or hope there aren't a lot of finishes, or or something like that on the card. So, uh, or hope it's something spectacular that you know takes it over. But either way, you know, I, I'm out here to win. Um, and the, the way I know to, to get more money is to keep winning and keep winning. So, and the bonuses will come, you know, as, as I win and as I progress and as I, you know, display my best self, um, you know, they'll come. Since Dana White is a big fan of our show, I'm going to put the screen on you, and you're going to have a direct line to the boss right now. What would you say to Dana White, who is watching right now? He's in the chat. I know it. Uh, what would you uh, say to Dana White? If he met Dana, if he, I, I deserve that fifty thousand dollars from from my fight in June fourth. Um, I gotta pay my wife's student loans off. That would be great. That would be like the perfect amount. Help me pay off my wife's student loans. Um, you know, we just bought a, our first house. So, you know, if if he is listening, he and he hears this, please give Tony Gravely fifty thousand dollars for. Uh, a performance of the night. There we go. Hey, hold on a second. Let me just say this, Dana White. Listen, you son of a bitch. <laughs> pay this man over here, Tony Gravely. He does it. Everyone in the chat, drop pay this man for God's sakes. You made yeah. me stand up, Dana White. Look what you did. I'm yeah. sorry. Holy shit. I'm sorry, Tony. <laughs> guy got me fired up here. Look, we got oh, Dana man. White emojis yeah. in the chat. I mean, what is he doing? Wake up, Dana. Yeah, All right. I was like, yeah, I don't know if it was because it was earlier in the card. Maybe they forgot about it. You know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. So you're, how long have you been married for? I've been married for seven, I think seven years. Hold on. Seven years, yep. Seven years. Okay, so is now, is this someone that you've been dating a long time? Like, have you been with this person for a while? Yeah, me and my wife, we, we've been together for probably about 10, almost 11 years, I think. Um, we, we went to high school together. We didn't date in high school. But um, we we actually didn't start dating until till college, and then um, you know we've been together for ten, I think almost ten, eleven years now. So, um, and we've been married for seven years. Wow! So you actually knew each other in high school, and then went different ways, and then li linked back up, and wound up getting married. That's pretty wild. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's crazy. You know, it's really cool because I I feel like I don't know. The more I travel around, especially coming here, I was like, man, I, I just 
I don't know what I would do. Like, if for one, if I wasn't married, um, you know, like, I, I, I'm happily married. So she's my best friend. But if I didn't have her and I was moving here, I don't know what I'd do. You know, she, she does so much for me. And it's almost like she's like my mom in a way. Like, as far as, like, all the stuff she gets done and, you know, as far as us moving here, um, as far as, um, like, the condo that we have that we just bought, um, she she found it. You know, she did everything for it. So, um, you know, I, I would be completely lost without it. That's really cool, man. It's actually really uh, refreshing. Like, a lot of people are in shitty marriages, and here you are. You know, you got your wife. She's doing the right thing, and she's been through your ride. I mean, she's known you long enough, your ups and downs, and then getting into the UFC. It's got to be so rewarding to have a partner like that. Yeah, it's really cool. It, it, it's amazing. We, we've known each other since high school. She's known me through wrestling in high school, through wrestling in college, through, um, you know, swearing I would never do workout ever again, to now <laughs> to, to start fighting and then wow. to back to being in and back to fighting. And then now I'm in, in the UFC. So, you know, she, she's been, she's been in the journey. I've really been kind of taking her up and down as far as like, um, you know, what, where we've been, um, you know, her anxiety levels when I fight. So when you became a UFC fighter, were you like, all right, babe, I'm a UFC fighter. Where's supper? Like, is that, is that how it goes? <laughs> no, she, she, she doesn't care. She didn't care about any of that, you know? And, it, and it's one of those things where it, it's kind of cool that, that, that helps you not get like a big head in a way, because you know, she, she doesn't care whether I'm UFC or not. She, you know, she's put in these situations where she's around a, a lot of positions where people would love to be so they could be, you know, in the fight industry, but she doesn't care. She's just there to, she's there to, uh, here to support me, love me, um, corner me. You know, she, she corners me. She, um, you know, comes with me every fight. She's there from the whole process. So it, it's amazing to have. I was just going to ask that. That was the next question over here. I do see uh, here's a, a, a picture after a big victory, and this is your wife, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm glad I got this right because I was going to be like, like, no, that's my side piece, and I'm like, oh, shit, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, so so she's in she's in your corner every time? Yeah, she's going to be for probably, uh, let's see, I've, I've had 30 professional fights, probably at least 20. Uh, she's cornered. So every UFC one and pretty much every one the past like 20, you know. And a beautiful woman, too. Look at you. Look at you, player. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> That's awesome, though. It's it's really cool that. Now, what's the secret? Because I've, me and my wife, we actually run the show together over here. She's with our, our child, so she's not with us now. But, like, we have a blast doing the show. But there are times where we just go at it with each other. What's the secret to a healthy marriage, especially as a UFC fighter? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I think it it all, it all depends on the people too. You know, you really have to have someone that you are are friends with. You know, so that helps a lot. Because if we weren't if we weren't married, I feel like we were, well, we were actually friends before we were, you know, before we started dating. Before we, um, so I've always known her. So that helps a lot too. You know, if you if there's someone that you you can't really relate to, then that's something you should figure out before you get married. Mm. Um, but communication giving each other space, um, just being as rational as possible uh, is, all I, is all I know. That's all I can think of. That I mean, dude, you were like like the coolest dude ever. Like, like for real. Like, I, Are you always this nice or are you an asshole sometimes? I mean, I hope so, but my <laughs> wife will say that when I'm cutting weight, she claims that like I act mean, but most of the time she messes with me on purpose. Well, not most of the time, but sometimes she messes with me on purpose, and then I'll I'll respond, and it's not even that bad. She acts like I'm being mean. So she'll say I'm mean, but well, she's keeping so. you grounded. Yeah, she's keeping. You. I I did notice in the chat. I think she's actually in the chat right now. Kayla Gravely is her name. Yep. Look yep. at that. All right, so it's not a troll. It's actually your wife in the chat. Okay, hello, Kayla. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Um, so that's pretty cool. Has there been a moment in any of your fights? where you had a couple's moment in the corner. Like, so say here you are on the stool, right? You're getting advice, there's crazy stuff going on, the crowd's going nuts, and did your wife say, you didn't fold your laundry right? Did she ever say anything that like to make you laugh or something? No, my wife, man, she she gets so worked up before the fights. Like the night before, 
like the last fight specifically I remember the night before she like couldn't sleep and she kept saying oh my god I'm like oh my god like I just wanted to be over and I was like I mean uh, you know for me it's different you know I'm, I'm actually the one going in there and I have all the confidence I'm the one that did the work so like I've, I've envisioned it so many times you know so but she gets she gets so you know worried about you know sh- I think more of she understands how bad I hate to lose and how bad it hurts and you know so she she's really nervous about that and Mm-hmm. Um, I think more so than actually me getting beat up or anything, but but yeah, she she gets really nervous, but um, I usually just I try to keep it as cool as I can. Do you ever like beat up yourself like hard on yourself for dragging people through? Like so now your wife's intertwined with this. Like I know I'm tough on myself with certain things in life, and I'm always beating myself up for the dumbest reasons. Do you ever feel like in certain situations, damn, I could have been like a I don't know a FedEx guy or something where she wouldn't have to go through this stuff? Or do you have any kids that you're dragging along with this, or is this you and your wife? <laughs> Just me and my wife, and we we got two cats, so they're kind of like our kids. We've had them for like. Uh, like over 10 years as long as we've been together pretty much we've had these cats so there i guess those are our kids okay so and and so that's actually a lot better so you don't have to do you plan on having kids in the future or are you just like ah, one day at a time yeah we're we're, we're, we're planning on having kids uh in, in the future okay there you go. And would you like them to get into the follow in the same footsteps? I noticed they asked Max Holloway this question, and Max is like, ah, I don't know. Uh, what would you say? Would you like, if you had a son or a daughter, like, would you like them to follow in your footsteps? I mean, if, if it was something that they wanted to do, then then yeah. You know, I don't, I don't want to be the kind of guy that continue like, to push their kid to do something that I did. Of course, I want my kids to start out wrestling and uh, do martial arts and things like that. But you know, I don't want to. I don't want to push my kids to do something that they don't want to do. I want to try to expose them to different things and let them kind of experiment, see what they like. And uh, you know, I would love for it to be something that I that I like doing as well, like fighting that way or wrestling, so I can you know um, help a little bit. You know, not like overstep my boundaries as as a father over the coach type thing, but but um, be able to have some input. But at the, at the end of the day, whatever makes them happy. Um, I'll, I'll support them as much as I can. That's awesome. That's really cool. It, you're a better dad than me because I keep my daughter in a cage and I, I throw a steak <laughs> in there and let her gnaw on it and say, <laughs> I can, it's like a bird. I just put a fucking cloth over and she falls asleep. Is that wrong? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm kidding. By the way, do not cancel me. I'm kidding. It's a joke. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, so, too, so you're an animal person? Yeah, I love animals. I, that's another thing I love about Florida is because um, – you have iguanas walking around all the time, anoles, geckos. Iguanas, I swear, you look at them, they just look like um, mini dinosaurs. They're like Godzillas. You know, they just, they come out, they're really big. There's all kinds of ducks. They're like um, herons, which are like four feet tall. So, That's awesome. you know, it, it's a, it's, if you like animals, this is the place, you know, there's all kinds of animals. And, and I like, you know, I like, I like cats, I like dogs everything so it, it's it's been like an adventure being out here getting to watch the birds and the and the iguanas it sounds really weird it sounds like something an old person would do but <laughs> i can tell that the older i get i've gotten the the more i like to do things that like enjoy sitting around and stuff like that so it's so you're an old soul though it sounds like it sounds like because i mean you settle down with someone that you love, you, you be, you're content at an age where normal 30, when I was 30 years old, I was a hot mess. Like, I was fucking nuts. I was on my first marriage, running around, going to Vegas and shit, like, acting like a lunatic. But here you are, you got it all together. You're chill. Like, it's 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 kind of wild. Did you, when you were younger, were you crazy? I was crazy. I was I was the, the wild kid, the kid that um, got in fights all the time. But always, I remember... I remember like almost all the stuff I did. I remember being, I remember exactly what my principal's office looks like in elementary school. I remember exact layout where the fish, where the fish aquarium was, what the what the motto was, everything. That I was in there all the time. So uh, that and uh, so I was I was a really bad kid. So but wrestling really straightened me out. It gave me like somewhere to put that extra energy, you know. And I was always a smaller kid, so you know if a fight happened. I would have to fight because, you know, the big kids get to get away with, you know, kind of looking big and not having to fight. But the little the little guys have to fight. They don't have to fight, but I'm not going to not fight, you know. Mm-hmm. So 
that was kind of how I was as a kid. Um, just a lot of extra energy, got in trouble a lot. So, um, you know, wrestling straightened me out. And I think, like, it's one of the things where, like, my family can't even, they're so blown away by the person I am compared to the person I was that, you know, it's just like night and day. So that, that almost helps them support me even more, whether they're fight fans or not. They see like kind of like a transformation. So it makes them kind of want to support me, whether they enjoy actually watching me fight or not. That's awesome, man. And, and so your family is all for it now, huh? Is there anyone against the career move that you went towards? Um, there's probably some, I'm sure there's some people that, um, usually the older people don't really like it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I think my, my grandma hates, hates it. Uh, she, she, I don't, I think it's been on the TV. Maybe my aunts are watching it and she like, didn't want to see it. She like looked away. But, um, but when I see her, I mean, she, she, she always asks, she's like, you still doing that fight and stuff? I was like, yeah, still doing it, you know, but she, she doesn't like, she doesn't like it. I mean, obviously doesn't want to see, you can't, she can't comprehend the fact, why would I want to do that? Why would I want to get in there? And, and every normal person does the same thing. I even do the same thing when I watch fights at times. Hmm. Why would I want to get in there and punch this dude and let the dude punch me? Like it makes no sense, but it's, I'm just wired. You know, I think some people are wired just a little bit different. And uh, I, I guess that's just how I'm wired. There you go. I have great news for you, by the way. Someone's coming in. This is Dana White. This is crazy. Hold on a second. Wonderful, Dana wonderful. White just donated to the show. He's got something to say. Tony, you kick ass, man. Your shit. You're the very best. Your one hundred thousand dollar bonus. It's yours. <laughs> I wish. I wish. <laughs> well, a hundred thousand dollar oh, bonus wish. coming your way. Look at that. I wish, man. <laughs> That would be amazing. <laughs> Welcome to our audience, our show. This is a that's, bunch of loonies. Yeah, what do you think about that? We're gonna spend it on. That's what. See, that's what I'm gonna have to do the next fight. I'm gonna be like, you owe me, you owe me double now because you didn't pay me last time. After <laughs> after they give me the microphone. Yeah, you can. We can clip that, send it to you, and you can show it to the boss and be like, bro, where's the money, man? Like, what's going on? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like now, you owe me, man. <laughs> well, I, I could talk to you all night. I actually regret booking another guest uh, after you, man. So, listen, if you have a fight coming up, you're always free to come back on. I have a couple of quick questions for you, and then we'll okay. let you on your way. Uh, are you watching the fights this weekend? Uh, are you going to be checking out Sean O'Malley against Pedro Munoz? Yep. Yes, sir. Actually, Pedro Pedro's my teammate, so um, definitely going to be rooting for Pedro on that one. The people that are sleeping on Pedro, including myself, I shouldn't be. Why should why is Pedro going to win this thing? I mean, he's never been knocked out. I know that's a thing here. Is Pedro going to be taking this guy down, ground and pound, or are we going to keep this on the feet? Like, how's Pedro going to get it done? I, I don't know how Pedro is going to get it done, but I can tell you how I think he can and how he should get it done. Um, you know, you you got Pedro's one of those guys, man. If you don't have power, power. Or actually, you know what? I don't really know how you can beat Pedro. Really, you'd have to like dance around. Those are only guys that beat Pedro because you can't you can't knock him out. You can only outpoint Pedro. You can only survive 15 minutes with Pedro. You know that's mm-hmm. how it is. And uh, you know I think Pedro should should give him no respect on the feet. Um, get really close to him. Um, O'Malley isn't. He doesn't really throw knees and elbows and and clinch. You know I think that he should close, chop his legs, clinch him up take him down and uh, beat him up, you know, or get get in really close, hooked in hooking range, and, and I think he can knock him out. So um, I think it's a really dangerous fight for O'Malley, not so much dangerous for Pedro in the way of I think O'Malley's only way of winning could be 15 minutes of avoiding, when it, which means he's got 15 minutes to not get hit by Pedro, which is a long time. Very interesting. So that's the way I see it. If, uh, that fight is fascinating to me. I mean, I, I look at it like this. It's dangerous for Pedro to take that fight, but if he does derail a hype train like Sean O'Malley, that puts him right back in place where, where people are like, oh, shit, okay. But he's not going anywhere, Pedro. I, I do want to ask you about your teammate, uh, Danny Sabatello. I, I'm sure you've been asked a gazillion times about this guy. This guy uh-huh. has literally, I mean, to me, just flown out of nowhere, and he is like this loud personality. And I, I want to ask you this. The people at the gym, are they like, okay, we got rid of Col- Colby Covington. Now we got this knucklehead. Like, is that the, the thing that's going on in the gym? What's going on with Danny? 
No, no, I think a lot of people do that comparison, you know, with Kobe and him, and I've seen where he, you know, he hates that. But, no, he absolutely not. Honestly, I, I don't know what Kobe was like in the gym because that was, like, literally, like, right before I moved, he had left. So wasn't really sure what, what it was like with him in the gym, but I hear that, you know, there was actual beef in the gym with him and people, and obviously I know there was, there is was still with Jorge, but there were also other, other athletes as well. Um, but Danny's got, you know, as far as I know, has no beef with anyone in the gym. Uh, he's actually a great guy, uh, which is to a lot of people's surprise. But, um, you know, he just likes being himself. You know, he, he likes he likes to be loud. He likes to talk. So, um, you know, that's his thing. But at the end of the day, he's a, he's a hardworking guy, nothing but respect for him. Um, you know, some people may, you know, some people say his style is boring. But at the end of the day, you know, he's going in there with these really, really tough athletes, and he's leaving unharmed. He still has his brain intact. He's not hurt. So at the end of the day, career-wise, he's making the smartest decision the way he does fight. He he's, has a, a big advantage, and he's using it, and he's not getting hurt doing it, and he's making money. It's. I was going through a stream where we were looking at the UFC champions, and I was saying, hey, you want to win a belt, clearly grappling is the way. Like, I mean, I mean, that yep. seems like the secret sauce. Like, if you're a good grappler, that is like 75% of the battle. It's, it's pretty wild when you look at the people's longevity as champions. You have some exceptions like Izzy, but then Izzy goes up and then he gets outgrappled. Like, so, so I mean, it just, it seems like a catch, a nipshin S when it comes to the UFC or Bellator or these other sports. And Danny Sabatello clearly is a good grappler, right? Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, he's, a, he's a great grappler, phenomenal grappler, and and the thing is, is if you can control where the fight takes place, then it's hard to lose. You know, it's really hard to lose. If if you are a grappler and you can take the best strike in the world down, it doesn't do him any good being the best strike in the world. So, um, you know, if, if you have that almost like every time it's guaranteed for a takedown, you know, then why not use it? There you go. Well, Tony, I really love talking to you. It was really nice getting to know you here on the MMA Holes. I can't wait to see you fight again. When you have a fight coming up, feel free to come back on, okay? Yes, sir. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me on. Uh, it was nice meeting you. Uh, I had a good time. Great. And if you have any final words to the MMA holes, this crazy community, now's the time to do so. No, just thank you for everybody. Thank you for the support. You know, if, if you support me, thank you. If you don't, um, hopefully eventually you'll, you'll support me. Um, but you know, I, I appreciate everything. The support really does mean a lot. You know, as fighters, I, I don't know what it means to, um, you know, most of the other fighters, but I know I truly appreciate the support. You know, whether it's a like, a comment, whatever, I appreciate um, just somebody wanting to see me succeed and and continue and supporting me continuing to, to chase my goals. Well, Tony, we're we're big fans over here on the MMA holes. Can't wait to see you scrap again. And thanks again for coming on. Tony Gravely, live on the MMA Holes. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, what a guy. What a guy here, Tony Gravely. Coming on the show, shooting the shit with the MMA Holes. What do you guys think in the chat? I mean, I thought it was absolutely wonderful, wonderful talking to him. I can't wait to talk to him again before his next fight coming up because, I mean, I don't know. I had a gazillion more questions I wanted to ask. But we do have Chris Action Man Curtis coming on the show. By the way, shout out to Tony's wife as well in the chat. It was very nice to meet you as well. Uh, guys and gals of the chat, we're going to play a quick word from our sponsors. And when we come back, we're going to be talking to Action Man Chris Curtis. We're going to be talking about Luke Rockhold being pregnant. We're going to be talking about UFC 276. So hang in there. We'll be right back after this quick break. And say hello to the Island Boys for us. Shout out to the Island Boys, you know. Nice young men.
Cause I'm a CBDX.com boy. We sell legal Delta ATAC. We. It will get you very strong. We sell gummies, yeah. Buzz based oil in a set. And they post on Twitter. Oh, yeah. Hey, on CBDX.com. You better get with them. You're gonna get real high. You're gonna get that tree. You're gonna get real down loud from the Ooh, island boys. You're gonna boy. get all down. And so from the ground, you be smoking bay. You be smoking trees. We a different breed. You smoking green and purple. And then you create a hurt. Yeah, yeah. Hurt. You better get with CBD. CBDX.com, yeah. cause we some CBDX.com boy. You better tap in on the website. Right, Island boy. right now. Let's be honest, when it comes to underwear, there's nothing more important than comfort. Why empty your pockets for generic underwear that loses comfort, quality, and style when you can slip into a pair of sheath and get even more out of your daily wear? With sheath underwear, you can treat your jewels like royalty as they are given their own private sanctum, keeping them secure and you in a state of bliss. Get 20% off sheath now using promo code MMAHOLES, that's M-M-A-H-O-L-E-S with the link in the description below. And for the ladies? Absolutely! Sheath isn't just for men. Ladies can now experience Sheath's style, comfort, and functionality too. Sheath for Women is crafted using a signature modal elastine fabric blend for form-fitting breathability that will not affect the natural pH environment or the microclimate of the skin while producing that long-lasting, unimpeded comfort. Use promo code MMAHOLES, M-M-A-H-O-L-E-S, for 20% off at sheathunderwear.com. All right, friends, we had Tony Gravely on. Chris Curtis, the action man, is coming on in a second. But we got some undisputed belts to talk about here. I need you to sing along in the chat. Because all I want is a customized belt. And there's only one place to get it. to our sponsors tonight we're flying high on a wednesday ufc 276 fight week that's right let's uh let's get our next guest on the line over here the action man chris curtis let's get him back on off of his big win that went down 20 stoppages 20 takedowns stopped i mean what the hell All right, we're going over here. Whoa, look at that. Oh my God. <laughs> Getting psychedelic, you guys high yet? All right, we're gonna get this. <laughs> All right, hopefully Chris didn't forget. Let me shoot him a message. <laughs> oh, he's on he's on Instagram now. Hold on a second. Okay. Shooting you a ring. Alright. Let's get him on the horn. Yeah, what a win, man. This, this actually says it right here. These body shots that were coming in by Chris. But bam! Smoking to the belly. And somehow this guy didn't go down. I'm curious what the hell was going through his mind. You know, over and over again. Just working. Hooking to the body. Bang, bang, bang. 
And this dude was just like, yeah, whatever, bro. It's crazy, man. It's a wild three rounds. All right, we got the submarine, submarine going. Try to get him here. Action Man is a mini Curtis Blades. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> Why? Because they're both black? Like, I mean, I don't understand. I don't know. All right, let's see. The good old Skype. Good old Skype. All right, if you could do us a favor, hit the like button and share the stream on uh, all the platforms at the MMA Holes on Instagram and Twitter. We'd really appreciate that. Um, there he is. Hey, Chris, how's it going, buddy? Technology, all right. <laughs> All right, what's up? Hey, what's up, Chris? You look like a man who has just come off another beautiful victory. I look homeless. <laughs> you look homeless? What homeless, happened? Yeah. How, did you take some... I heard you went right back into the gym right after the fight. I was back in the gym Monday. I was going to go Sunday, but I overslept uh, practice. We have been back in the gym since uh, Monday. Yeah. Are you... Man, I'm like, a, I'm like a diesel engine at this point. Especially let it idle a little bit. You know, if you turn it off, you got to try and make it do all the bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> you were saying how you were looking to jump on this card. Like, you had no problem with hopping on this card. Is that true? Yeah. yeah I would have loved to fight this weekend, yeah. And, and did you... Pay, no, fine, no injuries, why not? And you reached out to the UFC. You said, hey, man, get me a fight, or or you just threw it out on social? I, I asked, you know, there's nothing, nothing, oh, nothing available. I was like, hey, you know, Misha Tate's uh, fight's gone. I'll, you guys want to put an 85 fight in? And they're like, go home. <laughs> go home, kid. I, <laughs> dude, I, I was laughing so fucking hard at your buddy's uh, press uh, uh, media scrum today. Sean, I mean, dude, that was like, I listened to it twice. I, I went home to Jesse and I was like, you have to listen to this. Please listen to this. What are you, did you hear it? Okay, can you imagine if she actually wins the belt? <laughs> if you're the UFC, what do you do with that? It has to happen. It needs to happen. I feel like th this has to happen. Well, I feel like they'll like do the gladiator, like close them before the fight to make sure that he loses, like the Izzy fight. Like you can't have Sean as a champion. Like what do you like? I, I like the. I like, like the fact that that the that Sean was very transparent in the fact that he said that they want Pereira to fight uh, Izzy. Like that's the plan, and he's the guy that they're supposed to just kind of get rolled over here. Like he's realistic to their plan. I mean, it's you. It's anyone who's like, even I'm pretty sure there's some retarded people who kind of put two and two together here. It's very transparent what they're doing, but I think it's just a really shitty gamble they're playing. It's uh, I'm going to work out. Yeah, I mean, now, let me ask you. I mean, I don't want you to give away his game plan, or maybe I do. I mean, you would think that taking this man down would be... I mean, I know it's not Sean's in his... I mean, I'm sure he has it in his bag of tricks. But, I mean, I would imagine taking him down and testing him there would be the smart thing to do. Is that what we're going to see on Saturday, or is it going to be a slobber knocker? Who knows, man? Like, first of all, people don't realize... A lot of people are newer people don't fans don't realize Sean's Jiu-Jitsu black belt. Like, he's a legit black belt. He's a great from a great jiu jitsu base. Sean's a really good wrestler uh, ever since the Usman fight. But honestly, we know how to make the fight easy. But there's no. People are like, is he going to take him down? I'm like, bro, I don't know, honestly. Like, it's it's one of those things. So, like, Sean will do what Sean does for better or worse. So, who the fuck knows, man? He can go, he can go out there and make this really quick and really easy. He can go out there and have a, you know, a, a dick measuring contest. So like, bro, who knows? It's so stressful. But how, like, you, it, it's so stressful because you have no idea what he's going to do. It's just like... <laughs> so <laughs> ha are there, like, game plans in play and then Sean just goes off on his own thing? Has that happened before? It happens every time Sean fights. Yeah. <laughs> time, there's usually, like, a set plan that everyone else was thinking was a plan and Sean's just like, fuck that. <laughs> he goes and does this, Sean. It's like, yeah. 
there's a not really I'm gonna call it a game plan. There's like understood guidelines of what we want to happen. But then we're like, well, you know, Sean's gonna do what the fuck Sean does. So like <laughs> It's stressful, man. It's so fucking stressful. <laughs> I was when I was watching the press conference. I was I was in the gym laughing out loud, and people are staring at me like, "What the fuck is this guy laughing at?" I told my I told Jesse I was like, "Listen, you got to listen to this." And she's like, "I don't get it. Is he is he forcing humor?" I'm like, "No. I'm like, he's not a stand up comedian. I think this is him. Like, I would I would assume this is just this is how he thinks, right?" So it's it's just Sean. Sean amuses himself to no end, and like he. He's being super, he finds himself super amusing and super witty. And it's just how he is. But now you got to give him a microphone and now you're exposed to it too. It's just, it's not, for, it's not forced humor. It's just really bad humor, but that's just who Sean is. It's like, <laughs> it's the look inside the mind of a crazy person. <laughs> it should have seemed like that. And, and I was yelling and screaming last week. I was like, if they put a press conference together, I was screaming on air. I'm like, please, it would be a disservice to the to the MMA community not to put him on that dais. I feel the UFC has heard us and, and decided we are doing this press conference just to put the man on stage. I mean, I feel like you have to put Strickland on there with Israel Adesanya as well and Perea and all this and Sean O'Malley. Like, I would imagine that that you have to do this, right? I can't wait to see like the the, the Izzy Sean press conference is going to be the greatest thing ever. Like tomorrow is going to be ridiculous. Like oh my god. <laughs> like oh my. What did he say about his gay face tattoos? I was like, dude, he just said nice things about you. <laughs> like what? It... This is just how he is, man. Like oh my god. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> He won't. He won't say one thing and be done with it, and he will like drive the point home until like you're frustrated with it. So like, it's gonna be ridiculous. <laughs> like tomorrow is gonna be a fucking shit show. Like, welcome, welcome to the circus, guys. <laughs> Are you gonna? So now it's it's UFC Fight Week. You're in Vegas. The whole deal. You're gonna be there in attendance, hanging out. Uh, I don't. I'm not, I don't even think UFC got any tickets for this. So like, I'm, I don't, I don't, I'm trying to get tickets still, but I don't think I'm actually gonna be in attendance. I'm gonna. Uh, who knows? We'll see. Yeah, dude, who knows, man? It's 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 a there's a weird process, and like I'm not a favorite son yet, so like I don't get the special treatment. Listen, I like Chase Hooper. He was nice enough to come on the show. He's a great guy. But they got Chase Hooper and Booger Beard on this romantic fucking skirmish around Vegas. They can't put Chris Curtis, the action man, in attendance here. Fuck me, right? Like. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, just fuck it, fuck me, man. Fuck you, that guy. You need a sidekick. That's what you need. You need an you need a sidekick over there to run around the streets of Vegas. I don't know, fuck, fuck that. That's weird. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> that name. Who is that? What's that? Who the fuck is Booger Beard? I keep hearing that. So so this is the guy who is on social media who would put videos very close of his face, disturbingly close, and saying how he's gonna suck all the fighters' dicks. And Israel Adesanya was nice enough to put the belt on his shoulder during his last title defense, I guess it was, and it went all over the place. And now the UFC is trotting Boogerbeard around like he's royalty. What? A, oh my god! This is what's wrong with this fucking society now. Like that's, like that, that's that's that is what we blow up. And that's what we. Mar this is exactly why we're failing as a fucking species. <laughs> Uh, it's nonsense. So if I went on social media and say I want to suck every fighter's dick, now I'm involved. We 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 prop up the weakest of us. Like once again, like if this were another time, we would eat him. But like whatever. And now he's celebrated it. It's fine. Like whatever. <laughs> it is really disappointing, right? It's, it's so it's. I, he, I put him in the same category as I put every TikTok star. I'm like, if we were a hundred years ago, I'd eat you. Like, <laughs> I, 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 would have, I would have just like taken you out back. I would maybe like 200 years ago, I was eating you. A hundred years ago, I would have shot you and taken your horse. Like, oh. But now, no, we celebrate it now. So, like, good job. This is why the world's the way it is. So, what's the update with your check mark? We're still waiting for this thing. What is going on? Why are they not putting a check next to your social? No one knows. The UFC doesn't know. The UFC's media people try. I don't know what I did or who Cheerios I pissed in, but Twitter and Instagram both hate me. So I'm like, you know what? I don't even fucking need your check mark. I don't even care. I noticed you are more active on Twitter. Are you finding it more enjoyable? Yeah, Twitter's just, Twitter's just been ridiculously uh, funny. Like the the people, the, the, inter, the interaction with people are great in Twitter, especially because people will talk shit and then I come on the post and they can like everybody backpedals real fast. So that's Twitter's been really fucking amusing. So just uh, just being on Twitter is just 
you see the dregs of humanity. It's kind of like TikTok, <laughs> but like less new age. Yeah. You see like the worst of old humanity. TikTok's the worst of new humanity. <laughs> I noticed that you'll jump in there like someone will say something dopey about you. You'll jump in and respond and be like, oh, I love you, bro. Like, it's yeah, no, I, no. I, I, bro, I stalk fucking pages and shit. Like, uh, you're going to talk shit, talk shit, but like, I'll come find you. <laughs> oh my God. It's crazy, man. It's, it's a crazy world you live in now. But I mean, it seems like it's all playing out nicely. Here you are. Another victory. You, you're drilling the meat hooks into that Brazilian fucking six pack, 12 pack, whatever he's got going there. So you're hitting this guy. He's oofing, but not going down. I mean, that's got to be crazy, right? I mean, what was going on there? He made a weird sound. I asked him to go down. I was like, go down. Like, fucking go down. I talked to him after the fight. He's like, yeah, I almost went down, but I wouldn't let myself do it. I was like, you know, hats off to you. You've got heart, but you cost me 50 Gs. Like, motherfucker. But he's an almost guy. He, People question his heart, man. Hats on to him. He showed he's got a fucking good, he's got a hell of a heart, man, because I was cracking the shit out of that guy. Yeah, you were just working it over and over again. You stopped the 20 takedowns. That was so much. I tell you what. Maybe because we're I'm like a like super duper fan of you. We've been watching you for a little bit while. So I mean I was all into it, man. Some people like in the chat were like, Oh, this is stupid. What's going on here? It's not like it's your fucking fault that this guy is trying to lunge Bro, in twenty I times. I can't fucking make him stop shooting me. <laughs> <laughs> like, do you, do you ever just want to whisper him to like, bro, it's not working. Can you stop doing that? <laughs> I, 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 honest to God, I was so upset. Like, I really want you to stop doing this because it's just not enjoyable. I'm not having fun. There's no way he was having fun doing it. I'm like, why are we doing this right now, man? Like, just be, be better. Be better. But like, you know, I, I can't control what this guy's doing. They're like, oh, you didn't finish him. I'm like, it's hard to finish a dude who dives on you every time you flinch. He's fucking diving. It's hard to finish that guy. Yeah. And like, you, you can't please everybody. I wanted my finish. I didn't get it. I'm happy to get the win. But, you know, like, I, you can't please everyone. So fuck it, whatever. Well, it goes to show everyone they could shut the fuck up about your takedown defense. I mean, that's pretty obvious you got that. God damn. 20 take that dude. I, I, didn't, I didn't think he'd be able to shoot that many times, honestly. Like, in my head, we're like, yeah, we'll go out there, we'll stuff like five, and he'll break mentally. Like I'm like number fourteen or fifteen. I was like, I don't think he's gonna stop. Like I don't think this is actually gonna change at all. Like, yeah, he, uh, he came here uh, with a better gas tank, so hats off to him. Did you get any knuckleheads hitting you up on social saying, "Hey, you should have did this. You should have need him. You should have uppercutted him." Like, do you get the uh, the armchair quarterbacks? You always do. You get my favorite ones. Like, you fucking suck, blah, blah, blah. You didn't finish him. I was like, I lost money. I was like, I don't care if you lost money. I I, I really don't. Like, it, you know, like it's, it's like you can't make everyone happy. Then people will tell you what you should have done or what you did wrong. And I'm like, okay, well, go fuck yourself first of all. I think Nate Diaz screwed it up for everybody. Did you see when Nate Diaz got someone slipped into his DM and said, hey, you lost. I lost money. And then he, yeah. like, PayPal'd them or something. I think that fucked everything up. Oh, bro, I didn't see. I wouldn't even be like decent with that. Like, people, oh, that, I wouldn't be mad about that. I think people hit me up, like, I bet on your opponent and he lost. Can you pay me back? I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> like, you bet against me. You lost your like rent and you need me to cover. I'm like, no, don't message him. Like, how would I help you? <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous, man. So, you get some great fans, then you just get fucking people who are absolutely insane. So, uh, you, you you just you just gotta learn to take it with it. I'm like whatever, whatever, man. I don't care. Like people are like, oh, my children are gonna starve. I'm like, well, stop betting money you don't have, asshole. And, uh, <laughs> like you know, it, it's it's whatever. What about the nut shot in this fight? I see uh, Dominic Reyes in the chat. It's I don't I don't know if that's the real Dominic Reyes, but anyway, the the infamous nut shot that happened. Great times. The first one was a super knee. The second one, we were like, oh, it wasn't a nut shot. Like no, it was toes to the belt line, but like heel was like a growing stomp. And, you know, like, I don't know if you guys, like, ever get hit in the nuts wearing a cup, but, like, getting to the top of your nuts, the top of your cup stepped on fucking hurts. And then the third one, when he said it wasn't a nut shot, after the fight, he was like, my bad, I missed it. Her being told me it was a nut shot. And, like, it was clearly a nut shot. The third one was a fucking front kick to the nuts. And that's when I started, like, yelling at uh, Greg's, uh, fucking Mark Smith, like, bro, like, why, why is this happening? Like, please stop. Because that third one fucking hurt me bad. Is that what you like, said to him? You asked him, why is this happening? <laughs> I, was, well, I was like, bro, like the third one hurt me really bad. I was like, that actually, like, that fucking hurt me. Like, but, uh, 
Yeah, man. He's like, oh, that wasn't a nut shot after the fight. He's like, yeah, I missed it. That wasn't a nut shot. My bad. I'm like, yeah, no shit. Like, my balls feel it. But, you know, it's an awful thing. He didn't do it on purpose. It's just, uh, you know, he's still new to striking and his uh, aim isn't exactly where it should be. And plus, when you're moving around and shit, it's hard to tell where the kick's going to land sometimes. Mm -hmm. It seemed like, whoa, here we go. Uh, it's. <laughs> It seemed like you guys were getting along pretty well, though. Like, I mean, after the fight, you guys were very cordial. Even before the fight, you were horsing around and stuff like that. So he seemed like a nice dude then, huh? It was great. I, I fucking like him. I'm a fan of his jiu-jitsu. I, I like the dude. I really do. Like, he's a really fucking nice guy. You I know, mean, I felt bad having to beat him up. But he's a really fucking nice dude. He's super respectful. He's just, like a, just a funny guy. Like, I like him. And, you know... I'm not strickling. I don't have to be a dick to everyone. Like, I tend to be pretty cheerful in my day-to-day -day life. I like fighting, but I'm not, like, a dick in my, like, regular, like, you know. Like, I, I like to fight people. I, I'm okay fucking a human being up. I'm okay beating the shit out of somebody. But I tend to be nicer about it. Like, why? Well, there's, there's nothing mean to me about fighting. I just happen to like fighting. You get along with this guy, but there's someone that calls you out immediately, and it's been all over the internet now with this... I don't know if I should say his name, but uh, you know he's he's uh, he's got, he got that guy from Detroit in his corner one time. He's got that that crazy right. knockout. Fuck Joaquin Buckley because <laughs> Joaquin Buckley is a snake and a clout chaser. Like, he does this shit. Like when he came in, he came to train for one of his fights extreme. We were like nothing but great to this dude. And he just running around butt hurt. And I'm like, you know what? Here's the thing. No one gives a fuck about Joaquin Buckley. The fact that you're running around with the, the, the Detroit Urban Survival guy in your corner to get people to talk about you means no one gives a fuck about you. Like, he's just trying to make himself relevant, but no one cares. I don't give a fuck about Joaquin Buckley, honestly. Like, I've got, you know, my goal now is to, you know, get a ranked fight. So, once again, Joaquin Buckley doesn't mean shit to me. But Joaquin Buckley, die nameless. There you go. I mean, he looked great in his last fight, but like you said, I mean, you are right there. Like, I don't know how you're not ranked right now. Like, that's kind of wild, right? I would be, like, number at least number 15, and uh, it's weird that the, the UFC rankings board is stupid. Like, it's not, even, it's not even UFC that does it. It's somebody, it's like this weird journalist panel, and it's just, it's fucking stupid, man. It doesn't make sense. The, uh, the requirements don't make sense because Umar and Magna Madoff got uh, ranked, right? Mm-hmm. Fun story. Umar Magna Madoff has three fight UFC fights, two stoppages, two uh, stoppages, and one decision win. Who else has two stoppages and one decision win? <laughs> <laughs> technically against arguably better competition in a weight class in a weight class that is technically like weaker. So how did he get moved up in a more stacked weight class? But I didn't get moved up with the same pedigree with better names in a weaker weight class. It is bizarre. It seems like this uh this, there's a pattern. Like, the Contender Series, you don't get into the UFC. Then you finally get into the UFC. They won't rank you after knocking fools out and, and getting unanimous decision wins off of crazy fucking black, black belt chasing killers or whatever. It seems like they got they got some... Th Maybe it's Sean Strickland. Maybe it's his fault. Well, it's, uh, the, the ranking system is just a stupid <laughs> fucking popularity contest. Like, it's... You know, if I... Like, we had to the Umar. His last name is Emmanuel Madoff, so they kind of sneaked their way through that one. But, like, it kind of just shows it's kind of bullshit. Like, I, I want a ranking because it affects my pay. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, this entire ranking system is the more and more – it's the more you look into it, the more bullshit it is. So it kind of just makes me angry. Like, we have the exact same resume in the UFC. I think done it against arguably better people, and I still don't get ranked that he does. So it's fucking you – know, uh, these people suck. I look at Edmund Shabazian, who was completely a hype train. He was a decent prospect at one point, and then kind of got exposed over here. He's sitting at 15. Chris Weidman, when was the last time he fought? And is, is his leg in like four pieces? I don't know. Like, what's going on here? He got a while before he can even fight again. Like, why not remove him? Honestly, removing him for the rankings does him a favor. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. When he comes back, I guess what? He can fight an unranked guy now, have his first fight against an unranked guy. Like, what should be doing in my favor? Like, there's mm -hmm. no reason why he's in the ranking still. It's so stupid. Yeah, it's pretty wild. So, I mean, so what do we do here? So you just keep on trucking, right? You just, whatever the UFC throws your way? Or are you like, you know what, fuck this. I'm going to start calling people out. We're Right now, we're hunting. We're, we talk to, uh, I think next week is when we talk to uh, the matchmaker to see. But, you know, I think, I think we're, we're hunting a ranking right now. So kind of got to wait to see where this weekend falls, where the chips fall this weekend with some stuff. And uh, our goal next, I think, is to, is to hunt a ranked opponent. So 
they're not going to move anybody out of the rankings for main activities. We've got to take a number. So now we wait and see, and we start hunting numbers. Mm -hmm. And and you know what? Would you fight at Edmund Shabazian? Would that be someone that would interest you? Oh, I I like Edmund honestly. Like I <laughs> Edmund's a friend, and we train together. Uh, I would honestly want to aim higher. Like if I'm if they're not going to move me in, I want to jump in. Like fuck it. Like you know. Everybody said Imanol. What about Imanol? I was like, okay, but like, what about Gastelum? He doesn't have anything scheduled. That would be a great fight. You versus Kelvin Gastelum? That'd be fantastic. It'd be a fucking fun fight for the fans. Like, fuck it. You know, people like, you fight Gastelum? I was like, fuck, maybe he kicks my ass. I don't know. I love Gastelum. I think he's fucking phenomenal. Maybe he does kick my ass. But maybe I win that. And then maybe, you know, that's it regardless. That's a fucking fight of the night. Like, I think it'd be a crazy fight. So, you know, like, I want something like that. I, I'm 34. I don't want to, like, fight once a year and hunt around you know we're gonna get in there let me jump in the deep end you know it's funny like they keep throwing guys at Gaslam that like are just like killers constantly throwing guys at Gaslam like one after another I feel like he's never had a chance to fight a guy that he's supposed to beat you know what I'm saying like he's like he's always just throwing against so if they throw him against a guy like you that's unranked not saying he's supposed to beat you but at the same time you know yeah, it's, yeah. Like, he's, he's had a murderer's row. Like, you know, like, fucking, let's go have a fun fight world instead of, like, having to fight every fucking world beater under the sun. Like, fuck it, let's do it. Like, well, why the fuck not? What a bizarre story Gaslam is. Like, like now that I think about it, like, it's just weird. He, The ultimate fighter, he takes out Uriah Hall, who when Uriah Hall is in the ultimate fighter, I thought this was the next Anderson Silva. Like, this guy was, like, something else. Ah, eh, Kelvin oh, beats him. Right? Yeah, and oh, <laughs> And, and then all of a sudden, Kelvin, uh, he fights Israel Adesanya, almost beats the guy. Like, it's like, what the fuck? And now look at him. Like, it's just a bizarre situation. I think Gaslam is one of the greatest fighters on the planet. It just depends on what Kelvin Gaslam you get that day. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? some days he's the one of the best fighters on the planet. And some days he's, like, not in the fucking mood for people's bullshit. He just doesn't really show up. But I still think when he's on, when he's on man, he's fucking phenomenal. Do you feel like right now, like, I mean, I know, you, you know, well, you're 35 years old now, but do you feel right now you're there? Like, you're you're in the zone. Like, you're, like, kind of, like, in the matrix. You're on a nice win streak. You could, you could beat the grapplers. You could knock people out that are supposed to be knocking you out. Do you feel like you're at the top of your game? I don't think I'm ever going to feel that way. I've never have. I don't think I'm ever going to. Like, I'm always a... Uh... I live in constant fear that I secretly suck, and I've been like lucky for like the last fifteen years. So that's my like constant fear inside. So I'm always somebody who's like striving to be better and do the better shit. But I feel like at this point, I may not be at the top of my game, but I feel like I can hang with pretty much anybody at this point. What about now? People putting some respect. I mean, hey, if they're not putting you in the rankings, at least the betting odds are going in your favor. Like now, they're saying, "All right, Chris is—he's the favorite now." Does it feel weird being the favorite now in, in the UFC? It, it was, man. These people were like, "Okay, Curtis can win this fight," because it went from like Curtis sucks and Curtis is going to be killed and uh, all that. It's so, like, okay, Curtis can win this fight, or Curtis is the favorite. So that was really weird to get used to. Like, all right, like they hate me less now, but you know, it is for me. It's uh, how how quickly things change, but at the end of the day, man, it's uh, I don't know. I mean, you still battle that that secret dude that you suck inside, so you just keep working harder. You know, for me as a fan, I, you're like the band that I used to love, and now you sold out. Like now you're the favorite. Like it's like oh fuck. Like I when I place a bet on you, Chris. I'm like, fuck, man, where's my band? Like, where's my corn first album corn? Like, now Ooh. you're like freak on a leash. Like, it's it's weird. I still Don't love you. That. Don't call me that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not freak on a leash. That is a, that is a hurtful comparison. Sir. Like, like, Very popular. It's <laughs> fucking rough. Like, yeah, it's... By the way, are you, what kind of music do you listen to? I never asked you that question. What is your genre of music? Dude, I, I grew up as an angry kid in the suburbs. Like, I, uh, I'm i like fucking still, I'm still trapped in like early 2000s uh, grunge, like early 2000s uh, alternative is like what I never left. I'm just an angry emo kid. Like, I, I've never, I mean, like, I, I've never left that phase. So, like, early 2000s alternative is where I live and die still. No kidding. Okay. So, uh, that's actually interesting. When I was a kid, I loved fucking corn. Like, that was my shit. <laughs> Corn was, I, used, I used to walk out to Coming Undone with my walkout song my, almost my entire amateur career. No kidding. 
Yeah, coming in doubles and walkouts on. Wow, man. I was I was like the biggest fan. And I got to be honest, you, like they still put on a good show, but they, they're all fucking drugged up and one guy's out and the other, it's it's like wild. But still, like when they started putting out those albums, pumping them out, I was like, this is not, it didn't feel like the old days. I don't know. Did you get that feeling from them or did you always think they were halfway No, just- it's, it's the same thing because I look at like a, it happens it's just, as you get older, I guess. I remember like Lincoln Park was great. They, they they knew our pain when we were young. And then uh Meteoria came out and we're like, okay, good but different. And then Hunting Party came out and you're like, Who the fuck are these people? <laughs> like what like what's happening? Like, it, it, it they all change, man. <laughs> yeah, it drives me nuts. It changes. All right, let me ask you, Slipknot. Do you listen to Slipknot? I used to, man. I don't really know what so I never stopped liking Slipknot. I just stopped hearing them less. And I think I think like once I was like 18 and 19, I really was, I really like wasn't as big into music at the time. I wasn't like following music as much. So I kind of lost track of Slipknot and I just never got back into them. I never stopped liking them. I just like drifted away and they hadn't done anything to actually make me come back or care. And it's just, yeah, nothing against Slipknot still. We just, yeah, like, uh, what was it? Duality was one of my favorite songs for a long time. I, I've I've been going down that rabbit hole lately with Slipknot again. Like I'm just reliving my youth, dude. I am like I feel like a kid again. Bro, duality was definitely my shit. Dude, it's so good. Uh, so what about like when you're working out, right? When you're getting pumped up and stuff like that, are you rocking like the heavy shit, or are you like to, like more subdued stuff? I just say Meteor and saved me. It wasn't a bad. So Meteor wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. But that was the first time I had to admit the Lincoln Park sounded different. There was a big difference between Reanimation, Hyper Theory, and Meteoria. Like one of those does not sound like the others, and Meteoria is the one that doesn't sound like the others. Mm. I still like Meteoria, but it, it that's when things started changing. Have you gone to? Uh, a, have you ever seen them play live, Lincoln Park? I have not. Like I've always wanted. I was. I've always like. Never, I'm not a big concert person. I'm just. Oh no, just never. Like I think everybody sounds better on like freaking like CD or whatever. And, but uh. Yeah, working out, man. I'm a dude. I I I am a metal kid working out. Like it's like like alternative and metal kid. Like I don't want to hear rap. There's just some rap that fits in there. I just need to be angry. I need to be in my feels and like sad and angry at the same time to get shit done. <laughs> that makes sense. Some people like have told me that they like to listen to like soft music to lower their heart rate. But I feel like I don't know how do you get anything from that if you're looking to beat another human being up. I need music that makes me like go back to being 17 when my heart was broken, you know, the world didn't understand me, and I was just all fucked up and like emotional. But no, man, I I definitely need uh, I, I definitely need like a uh, emo angry music for that. Like no, I I, uh, I can't do soft music, and then I can't do like mod. First of all, all modern rap sucks. Like 98 percent of it's terrible, fucking garbage. So I need I need something like hard to get me through uh, like workouts. When Sean O'Malley got the Takashi Six Nine tattoo, I was like, I, I never even heard of the guy. All I knew was he was a, he was a rat or something like that, and he got in trouble. I don't know what the hell happened, but I was like, let me listen to this because I'm like, well, what no. is what is it? <laughs> it was the worst thing I've ever did, the worst decision ever. And we and people give him money too. I'm like, oh my god, it's <laughs> we are so weak collectively as a species now. <laughs> to where like I tell people all the time, man, like. Had this been years ago, I would beat I would beat you to death at the club. Like you would you would you would come do these things, and I would club you to death just to be done with you, and like we would solve it. And but now we're not allowed to do that anymore. So now we give these people microphones and airtime and money, and it drives me absolutely insane. Have you listened yeah, to the new Drake album? No, like oh, God no. Like it's, <laughs> What? Oh my God! I don't know if you're familiar with Will Harris. Uh, he does like the documentaries for a lot of Ali Abdelaziz's guys, like Habib and all those guys, like that. Real nice guy, uh, Will. But he's like super duper Drake. I know Ariel Hawani's super duper Drake. Um, and I was like, and he's like, oh, you're a virgin or you're just old if you don't, can't get with the new album. So I'm like, all right, let me. I'm gonna listen to this. I'm gonna give this a shot. And I want to murder Will Harris. I literally want to find him, hunt him down, and kill him. After hearing this album, I'm like, what is this? What, what, the, what the fuck is Drake singing about? Like, what, 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 is this, what is this album about? It is, it is, so it's like a dance album now. So it's like more of a, you know, in the club type deal, right? Which I don't mind, but... Dance albums. It's, it's all auto-tuned, and it's just like a bad singer just trying to auto-tune his way through the song. And I'm like, what is going on? <sighs> 
this is where we are as a species. <laughs> like this is our ancestors weep. Like we used to have war drums and shit and all this, and now there's like a dude in the club dancing and singing to auto tune. Like this, this is how far we came. Like all right. <laughs> you know, I have a bone to pick with someone, Chris. How does Ariel Hawani run a show two a week? You come off a big win, big stoppages, no Chris Curtis. I thought on the re I thought on the menu we were going to see Chris Curtis on that shit show of MMA Hour, and he wasn't there. And I was like, you know what? We have him on this show over here because this is where it counts. How does he How does he snub you? I usually get a call from her. I don't know what happened. I don't, I don't, I don't know what's going on, but I'm assuming he's off doing Ariel Hawani things. <laughs> Likes me, you know, like he always gives me a text or whatever, but I guess he's off doing aerial things, so that's it. Oh, that's I couldn't strange. believe it. I'm like, the action man should be there. I don't understand this. This is like, and maybe because you're doing our show too much, maybe we're, we're tarnishing your reputation. You and Sean Strickland, man, if it's really like, I'm, I'm getting <laughs> bars from a lot of places. Have you ever found out the, 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 the spinning back elbow? Is it a real thing or not? <laughs> Ask people. It's just a spinning, it's just a spinning elbow. Oh, yeah, thank God. There's, yeah. Okay. I, I was like, I was pretty sure it's just a spinning elbow, and uh, yeah, it's just a spinning elbow. Good. Okay, good. Now I can go laugh in Jesse's face when we get off air. Okay, great. Yeah, she's wrong. Yeah, like, well, I, I, would, I would put this in your back pocket, though. Was how often can you, like, prove that she was wrong? It's true. This You're right. In back pocket, just in case, like, yeah. Good point. You know, we had uh, Tony Gravely on. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Tony Gravely. Um, yeah. Another CES cool. guy. Okay. Yeah, so I haven't had a chance to, it was weird. I've always like never, uh, it's just it, weird. I never had the opportunity to have him on the show. And I'm like, oh, we got to get him on, especially after his last big knockout. This guy is like one of the nicest guys in the world. Like he's like with his wife, she's in his corner. And all I'm thinking as he's telling the story about his wife in the corner, I'm like, I would be fighting. Like if me and Jesse, like it would be a second fight going on in the corner as well. But they have this loving relationship. He's getting wins. How does that happen? Uh, everyone's different, man. Like I've, everyone. It's just, a, I mean, the fuck if I know. I, I, I couldn't do it personally. Like I, I know, uh, I've got friends who, who are fighters who date. I'm just like, I would fucking kill you. I've, uh, I dated a girl I've courted before, and I was like, you know what? This man just killed our relationship because <laughs> I'm learning now that you can't listen. So like, this is like something to like me be concerned about later. But like, you have a problem listening when I tell you things. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You know, hats off to him. Like, sometimes it works, man. There's anomalies out there for everything. But, like, yeah, I couldn't fucking do it. I did it twice, and I was like, you know what? I think we're done dating. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy at all, especially if you're working with someone. It's just... Like, so, here's my, my thing is, like, I remember dating this girl a long time ago, and she was fighting. And I'm trying to talk her through things, and she's, like, giving me pushback on it. And, like, she's losing this fight. So I'm trying to talk to her to, like, save her. And she's not listening, like, intentionally, like, being obtuse. And I'm like, okay, in my head, I'm like, if zombies were coming and I told you to run, you'd be like, why? Why do I have to run? I, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm just like, you know, I can't trust you to do, like, you're getting fucked up and I'm trying to save you. And you won't do what I'm asking you to do, which is best for you because you have to be hard at it. So I'm like, you know what? I can't date you because you're a liability now. So, yeah. <laughs> that's so funny that you said, see, that's real. Like that's a real that's real talk right there because anyone that's in a relationship and me and Jesse have a great relationship don't get me wrong but like you know when you're in a relationship and you're working together it always complicates things in a certain way and here you are fighting like like she is in the, in battle and all you want to do is have her succeed the last thing you want is her to get beat up. I feel like only one can be like I'm trying to save you Anakin and you're over here just getting mad at me being fucking <laughs> upset and I'm just like don't. I have the high ground, don't jump, but you jump anyway. Now you're mad at me because shit's going wrong. And I'm like, I told you, like, I'm, I've tried to help you at every turn. And you just refuse to fucking listen because it's coming out of my mouth. So I don't know how couples do it. And I stopped the ground because I, I'd be like, you know what? We're getting enforced. Like, it's over. <laughs> it's so wild, man. And some people are, I, I like people, like, I'm envious of people like Tony because he is so zen. He's so chill. He probably picks and chooses his battles in his relationship and does the right thing. I am not like that. I have to sit in the pocket and I got to swing back. I don't know why. I can't keep my mouth shut. This is why I've been like, my engagement failed. This is why like all my relationships fail. I, I know my shortcomings in a relationship. That's why I just shut the fuck up now. Like, <laughs> I, I just don't say anything. I'm like, really, this isn't worth it anymore. Like, I just don't say shit. Like, 
I didn't really try to date anymore because I fucking suck at relationships. Like it's a so I hats off to him, man. But yeah, I, I'm with you. Like once shit goes downhill, I dig my heels in. And I'm like, all right, well nobody's gonna be happy now. It's so it's so fucked up. Uh, I don't need to talk, hey, I'll, I'll tell a girl, like, look, man, I don't need to talk to you for like four days. We can live in the same house, be in the same bedroom. I won't say shit for four days out of spite. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. I don't need to have a <laughs> have you ever been with a woman though that you were so head of head over heels for that you would actually become a puss like a complete simp where you're like i can't even believe i'm acting this way you know what i always feel like i would and like i think like maybe i start that way but i lose interest too fast for it to last so i'm like the nicest guy for the first six weeks and but at that cutoff mark i'm like okay look like <laughs> It switches a real bit like, uh, oh man, like my, my crippling ADD is just, it doesn't allow me to have like really great long-term relationships at six weeks. I'm like, okay, you gotta go the fuck away. Or like, you know, like, we start, I start arguing more. It's, uh, I don't know. You know what? Maybe I'll find her one day. We'll know the one that's like, oh, hey, stop being weird. I'm going to make me uh, be a bitch about it. But for now, man, you got like, you know, three to six weeks. Then I'm like, fuck it. <laughs> so you're basically like a Seinfeld episode. Basically you'll find a way to make it fall apart. You ever see the one with Jerry and she's I think she's other people and he's like, okay, that's fine. And she's like, you're not upset? He's like, no, these things always work out for me. That's me. Like, <laughs> like that, that is me. I'm just like, okay, it's fine. I'm like, you're not gonna fight for me? I'm like, no, it's, I'll, I'll fall into something else. It's what happens. Seinfeld, by the way, still holds up. We blasted through it not too long ago. It's still just as funny as it was before. It is by far one of the greatest shows ever. And like I, so I didn't have cable growing up, so I watched a lot of fucking Seinfeld. And I still watch Seinfeld. I think it's glorious. I wanted to ask you, did you see um, the Doctor Strange sequel yet? No. I, dude, I'm like behind. I just now watched the Batman like a week ago. So I'm like three months behind, like four months behind the movies. I need to watch Doctor Strange and Thor still. So I think I'll, I think I'll do that this weekend, maybe. Okay. Was it, everybody said it's dark. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't want to say too much. I saw it. I was just wasn't the biggest of fans, and I love horror. I love gore. I love dysfunction. I felt like it was a mess. Like, I felt like it was just a hot mess. And maybe, I don't know, maybe I was too critical, but... Not even a good hot mess. That's unfortunate. Uh. Yeah, I was cringing. I, there was parts where I was like, what the fuck's going on here? And and I, and I now, I think I'm, I think I have something wrong with me. I think, I think the Batman was okay, man. Like, I think the Batman was okay. Wasn't the greatest Batman movie. But if you look at it like a year or two Batman, it makes it's a good movie. It's not like oh he's not he's not the best Batman, but it's look at it like year or two. I'm still learning Batman gives it makes it a lot better. But like you know it's it was alright. Well, is so this? I, I tell you what, I thought Batman the Batman. I thought it was great until the end. And I don't want to say what happened in the end, but it just felt like I was like, ah, eh? like, I just like, what? they feel like they just wrapped everything up and like, okay, here you go. Like, it was awesome. Like it was tense. It was brooding. It was like, it felt like a horror movie. It could have went a little further in some points, but I was still satisfied. The penguin was great, but it couldn't have gone further because it was, I thought the movie ended three times. They kept going. I was like, holy fuck. Like we we were here for a while. Uh, yeah, right. The third act just like felt like who was that? Uh, wherever that was. Yeah, the third act fell apart. Mm -hmm. The third act, I'm like, why? A, I'm like, why is this still going on? And B, holy fuck! Like, they, I felt like everybody got high on set. They just like, you know what? We'll just wrap this shit up. Exactly. There's gonna be some tweakers shooting at you. There's a flood. They're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was just a mess. It was like, what's going on? And and I'm watching him drag people through water in this heavy ass outfit. I'm like, dude. I mean, shouldn't they be dragging him? He's in the big armored outfit. Like, what the fuck? He drowned like three drowned three times in real life. <laughs> but he's Batman. Oh, absolutely ridiculous. It, it, the third, it was, it was cool to third act. Then I'm like, A, I thought this movie ended twice. And like, why is it still going on? And then like, I, I just, I stopped caring. But I wanted to know what happened. It was weird. Then like bad Batman shoots up map and goes like super soldier. It was fuck we got it got weird for a second. I, I did a review on our second channel and someone brought it up in the chat. The Vader the Darth Vader de theme song. Did you notice this? It went dun, 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 and it stopped. Yeah, the, the, right? The and I, Batman yeah, every time Batman showed up, it was cool, but I was like waiting for the rest of the Darth Vader song. It sounded like the Darth Vader song, no? 
Yeah, it does sound like the Imperial March. I think I noticed that watching. Like, oh shit, it sounds like the Imperial March. The beginning of the Imperial March. There it is. Do, have you watched? <laughs> now I'm getting real nerdy with you. Have you seen Obi Wan or no? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna start it probably tonight. Actually, okay. uh, everybody's telling me I'm gonna start it tonight. Okay. But uh, I, I'm gonna circle back to Batman here because there's some weird shit in that movie that makes me laugh. Like one of the things that really bothered me. Do you remember when uh he's talking about how he can't be everywhere and he's like in the shadow, think people scared? Remember when they're about to beat the fuck out of that guy, like in the subway station? Yes. Like Batman's just waiting, and then fucking that dude up for about thirty seconds. And I'm like, what were you doing? Just watching this dude get fucked up for like <laughs> he's gonna come out right away. He's just kind of waiting. It makes a sound. They like look, go back to fucking do it up. And I was like, you're the worst superhero. <laughs> <laughs> well, all I can think about is the car chase. Like when he's chasing the penguin, hmm? when when he was chasing the penguin in the, in the, the whole car scene, which is a great scene. But how many people do you think died in that scene? Like at, at one point, that that uh, the truck he blew up that slipped. I'm like, bro, there were people behind you. Like, <laughs> like just complete. It's he's still not as bad as the bat, uh, the Ben Affleck Batman who was machine gunning people and yeah. just didn't, you know, talk about public safety. <laughs> Backflake was still my favorite. Backflake was like, bro, I don't give a fuck about this battle. Like, as long as you didn't actively, see, if Backflake didn't see you die, he didn't care. It didn't count. Like, uh, <laughs> It's so weird. It, the whole, whole Batman thing is so bizarre, but yet I'll watch it no matter what. If they throw, like Michael Keaton, they're dragging Michael Keaton back in that Flash one thing that's going on. And was he, like 80? And <laughs> so you know what? It's fine. Because if you ever watch the Batman show, uh, the TV show, Batman Beyond with old Bruce Wayne. Yes. Michael Keaton looks like old Bruce Wayne, so I'll take it. I, I hope I hope yeah. I don't start laughing. Like I really hope. Like they did you see the trailer? Like that little teaser where his he's walking in. You hear the stomp of his boot, and it's Michael. You know it's Michael Keaton. You hear the voice. You kind of get chills. Did you see that trailer yet? I haven't. I gotta look it up. Yeah, the Flash trail. I think it's Flashpoint or something. It's like a teaser. Little Michael Keaton thrown in there. Isn't that movie canceled now? Well, now I'm hearing the Flash. They're changing the Flash actor. Like I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's like, yeah, it's like Ezra Miller, like, fucking terrible. Like, yeah, apparently they didn't realize he's, like, super terrible. I, I don't know. All I know is I got to catch up on the show The Boys. I don't know if you've seen that. Have you seen The Boys yet? I love The Boys. I own all the comics. Okay. The, uh, graphic novels. So I love The Boys. So like, the show is different, but it's still fucking phenomenal. Yeah, I haven't seen the new season yet, but I've loved it so far. Is it really far off from the comics? Oh uh, yeah, it's it's pretty far off. There's a it's it's very 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 different. But okay. It's still really good. Okay. It's more, arguably a lot worse. <laughs> the comics are worse. Oh, the comic. The shit in the comics is fucking horrendous. Like absolutely horrendous. Like it is so out. Of, like the show, even third the third season, they're like bringing it in line with some of the ridiculousness of the comics. But it's way worse in the comics. Hmm. Interesting. You know what? Like I was when I was a kid, I have like two bins in my like little fucking closet downstairs, just filled, stacked with comics. I was a huge Spider-Man fan. Like I was just like retarded, spending all my money as a kid. My my bubblegum money money was going to fucking comics and shit like that. When you were a kid, did you uh, collect comics or baseball cards or any of that stuff? I was poor. I wasn't like shit, but like hunger and lint. But as an adult, <laughs> I spent way too much money on uh, my comic collection. Like graphic novels, manga, comics. I've got a sizable collection that I spent more money on than I'm proud of. But, uh, so when did yeah. you start? When did you start collecting? Uh, like 19. 19. Oh, okay. So you knew uh, what was going on. You're like, fuck it. This is fun. Yeah, I'm like, fuck it. I, I, I knew who I was. And I'm like, you know what? I loved it. And, uh, I've got a sizable collection at this point. Now so, that you got all this UFC money, I mean, are you blowing it on like comics and shit or what? I have like worked really well to budget because like I am so I live like a hobo man like I, my, I got a, I bought a nice apartment which is nice but I don't really like need a whole lot of like I still drive the same piece of shit car I've had so I got to Vegas like I don't really buy expensive stuff I think the most expensive thing I bought in a while was like uh I bought my gaming PC but like outside of that if I got my place to live I got electricity food and video games and like my my my, my home shit. I don't need expensive clothes. I don't need like eighty percent of what I wear is like free shit from the UFC or like free T shirts. I don't like go buy expensive stuff. Like I've got no interest in showing off or like projecting an image. I am like 
a step above homeless in my mind still, but as long as I got the shit at my house, I'm happy. Has, I come home, I got my video games, I got my nice couch, my nice bed, my big TV, that's all I need. Living simple. Hey, that's not that's yeah. a smart thing to do. I, that's the thing. I mean, materialism is, you know, it's not everything. I mean, unless you have money to wipe your ass with, I mean, I, I don't know. It's it's good to save, I guess. What about investing in, like, real estate and stuff like that? Have you ever thought about, like, a future plan with that? I'm thinking about buying a house in Turkey, actually. You know, Turkey, yeah, I'm thinking about buying a house in Turkey. I was really, uh, I've looked into that a lot. So I think I may buy a retirement house in Turkey just because... Wow, it's cheap, and then like you know the property, like the value of the property will only go up. So I'm thinking about buying a retirement house in Turkey. So what would you do? Hire like a management team to like rent it out for like something, or you would just let it sit and just retire? I probably hire a firm just to like manage it and like rent it out. Well, until I'm like actually want it, but like yeah, it's at that point you know I'm just recouping money on the investment. It's only the property is only gaining value, so like why not? Is that where you uh, went on vacation before? What was it your last fight? It was Turkey, yeah, uh, yeah, it was, it was Turkey, yeah. And and that was with your ex, correct? My, my ex, yeah. This <laughs> is a beautiful country. Uh, so, I mean, and like the property that the property there is really cheap to own, and like you know, the I just, I'm watch, I'm like following the private housing market, and the prices are going up. I'm like, I should get property here. So how'd you uh, how'd you pick Turkey to go vacation? Uh, she's from Turkey. Oh, okay. Well, that, that yeah, makes sense then. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, I was curious. I'm like, yeah, how did you wind up in Turkey? Well, then, there you go. Istanbul and uh, Izmir. Yeah, it was great. So, how did you meet that girl? Uh, she was, I met her in Vegas. She oh, okay. got stuck out here during uh, COVID. So, you, so what was it like? Was it like a, a night out or something like that you ran to, or was it like a mutual friend thing, or like how did that happen? A mutual friend, yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. I was, I was oh. wonder, man, like athletes and shit like that. Like, how do you guys like fucking hook up? Like, like I, I picture you guys bottle service, like a like a smoking hot chick comes up to you, like get get to my room, you know, like, but it's I not that cool, clubs. huh? I hate clubs. Oh god, like I'm the least I'm the least fun fighter ever. Like professional, it makes me laugh. I'm the least fun professional athlete. So every like picture you have of a pro athlete, I'm not it. Like I'm in bed by like ten thirty on most nights. I'm tired now. Like if I'm if I'm awake past ten thirty, I'm playing a video game. Practice is over. I want to go home and like hide in my house and play games and watch TV, <laughs> eat my food. I I am just I I'm, I am so old. I'm 34, but I'm like 62 inside. Like when I retire, I'm gonna be old man Curtis. I'm gonna be on my yard with a shotgun, like somebody's balls in front of my yard. I'm gonna shoot it and they can get it. Like don't go there. That's old man Curtis. I'm I'm just a crotchety old man inside. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, listen, I mean, I, it's, I guess everyone's got their own thing, right? You got Sean O'Malley goes out there, and he gets white boy wasted. He goes crazy. He's fucking hanging out with the Nelk boys. And then you got guys like Cowboy, which I was shocked to hear today when he was doing his media scrum. He's like, I'm not that guy anymore. I hang with the family, you know, and, and things are different. So I guess whatever, like. Bro, one of my biggest, like, time things I like to do is, like, uh, when I get some free time after practice, I hop on, and mind you, I, I so my son loves Fortnite, so he's back in Ohio, so we hop on, we play Fortnite for like three hours a night, or we'll play like a, a game called The Forest, where you're like fighting cannibals. Hilarious, like, yeah. I play video games with my son at night, like that, that's how I spend my time, like that, that's what I like to do, like I'm not, I'm too old to go party, I don't care about drinking all night and doing shit, like no, hanging out, playing games with my son is like more than enough fun for me. That game, The Forest, by the way, it's one we haven't had, but we played Raft, and then someone was like, yo, you gotta check out The Forest. It's like, you're eating people and shit. Play, play, play The Forest, it's, it gets scary as fuck, because, like, right now, so for his birthday, I bought him, like, a, a upgraded his computer back home and everything. So right now, we're waiting on Sons of the Forest, the sequel, and like, that's what we're really excited about now, is uh, Sons of the Forest. And but you, it's like, play The Forest, it's really fucking fun. You could play with, like, 12 people or something like that, right? Or, it, it's crazy, man. Like, yeah, you guys are like, it's like you're in there, you're fighting cannibals, you're trying to build like a like a base. It, it's crazy. It, go play it. It's fun. Yeah, I got to try that out. I think I think that might be the next move. I got uh, I got a couple of uh, donations coming in here. Let me see what we thank got. Thank you, uh, D. Brooker. Thank you uh, for becoming a member. Appreciate that. Very nice of you to do that. We got something else coming in. Uh, uh, yeah, he's a member. He's a white belt of the MMA holes. Look at that. Um, let's see. Wonderful, this is wonderful. from Tropic Tom. If Chris dyes his hair rainbow colors, he'll get ticks and a ranking. <laughs> oh, God. Um, 
God. Who doesn't understand how much I hate Sean O'Malley? <laughs> like, I look at Sean O'Malley and I'm like, you are everything I hate about this sport. Like, absolutely everything. Like, I, I remember a time when people are like, your merit was based on like your fighting and you went and you fought the best guys and all of that. And now, like, you're getting your like fucking rainbow hair and letting, like, you know, this kind of pedophile tattoo his initials on you. Like, it's weird, man. Like, he, re- he he represents everything I hate, and I absolutely, oh my God. Hold on, I got something for you over here. Here he is, Sean O'Malley. Welcome to Sweet Sweat Sweet. Oh my God, Sweet Sweat. Oh my boy. Here he is, uh, Sean O'Malley. There was a look that he had on um, at the media scrum. Very interesting. He looked to me like a homosexual Howard Stern. I don't know if you oh, saw Oh, yeah, I saw that. He looks... Uh, <laughs> it's like Howard Stern and... Howard Stern and Campbell and uh, Carrot Top had, like, a fucking weird orgy, and, like, that was all that was left in the sheets. was like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, what's going on here? Howard yeah. Stern and Carrot Top, like, had an orgy, and this is what was in the sheets when they took them the next day. This is fucking weird. You know, I, I have to give him respect for how he's marketing himself. I do have to give him that. And the fact that he's probably a couple exits away and could beat my ass up. up. But, uh, you know, regardless of the fact, uh, in the beginning, when he came in from the Contender Series, the guy had no crazy hair. He had the, the, the McGregor-esque tattoos. But he had the knockout, and it was kind of cool. And then all of a sudden, he gets in the UFC, and then he's got that weird situation where he's laying on the mat and Joe Rogan's interviewing him, this shit over here. And it was just, I don't know, it was just a series of things that happened that just made him more and more unlikable. Like, do you remember when he was doing this? Yeah, I genuinely hate Sean O'Malley. This is the <laughs> fight he lost and didn't lose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, oh, wasn't God. it if, if his opponent didn't... What was it? If if they didn't go for the takedown, he literally would have just collapsed. But they just went for a takedown and Sean wound up winning. I don't. I don't. I I try to ignore Sean O'Malley as much as possible. <laughs> he's he's in that list like that category with Kayla Harrison. Where I just try to think about him. <laughs> well, I, I I noticed that Sean Strickland now. It seems like he's made amends with Kayla. I I don't. I I didn't even ask. <laughs> I care so little about Kayla Harris that I didn't even ask. Well, I got to ask you now. Wait, so what is your thing with Kayla? I didn't know that you had a thing with her. I just think she's terrible. <laughs> and I, I think she's terrible, and I think they keep, like, it, I, I, nothing about it. I, I, I think she's fucking terrible. <laughs> so what did she do? Like, all right, she looks like Woody Harrelson. Is it her look? Is it how she fights? First of all, I am not convinced that's not Woody Harrelson. Either <laughs> way. Like, I've never seen them together. Uh, I, I'm not convinced it's not, but more importantly, like, it's just like she's so manufactured. The same shit with O'Malley. They're just manufactured hype, and I, I fucking hate it. And it's just like okay, like what? Uh. So I'm trying to think about more people now we can piss off. Uh, so uh, what do you think about? Oh shit! There's so many personalities coming into the UFC. Who's another person that that comes to mind that you just can't stand? I hate most people. <laughs> like, uh, I come from a long line of haters. I hate most people. Mm. Um, it's probably a lot, man. Like, it's probably... I don't even follow fighting the way I used to because I think the sports become stupid. Like, it's so fucking stupid. And, like, Conor McGregor ruined it for everybody. Like, GSP ruined the sport for a long time. Then it fixed itself. Then Conor McGregor ruined the sport again. And like now we're still in the McGregor like aftershocks era, and I'm just like, uh, I don't even really like follow anything. Everybody wants to be Moss. I hate Moss with all. <laughs> I can't stand him either. I'm with you on that one. I met the guy, nice guy, but yeah, is it not annoying now or what? It's it's it's, it's so I hate Moss with all. I really do hate Moss with all. Uh, I don't think anyone likes Dominic Cruz. That's kind of like you know like low hanging fruit. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, what about Ian Gary? Someone throws Ian Gary out there. Ian Gary. That, uh, uh, how can people say he's so good when he struggled? Like, he, oh, God, I hate Ian Gary. <laughs> I want to play. Hold on. Where's the clip? I got to fucking play this. I mean, the, I think I think Ian Gary might be special. So I, I'm kind of trying to cut him a, like a, some slack here. I think there's something wrong with the guy. He delusionally thinks that he's as good of a talker as Connor and Chael Sonnen. He literally I, said that. He stumbles over every fucking time. Give him a mic. He's just like confused and stumbled. I'm like, you, 
And I feel like he practiced this in a mirror and it's still just not the way he thought it was. And like, I, I love, uh, we fought in New York together. He's like, oh, we're not, we're to take over part two, yeah. And he waited for applause, it didn't come. And I was like, oh, that's awkward. That's almost as bad as Jessica I. <laughs> I, I think this needs to be a reoccurring <laughs> sentiment. Go ahead. You don't believe she tried to get going and what Jessica I did? Wait, what was that? I was shit going, and you're like, no one's there. It was dead silent. <laughs> and Joe Rogan just had the biggest shit eating grill in his face. Like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many moments like that where I feel like I can't say it because they would all whoop my ass. But you could say it because what are they going to do? Show up at the gym and fuck? Like, who cares? Like, you could literally say. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever feel like like you might burn a brick? I guess you don't care, right? Like, it doesn't matter. Like, it, it's better to just speak your mind, right? Who am I going to burn a bridge with, Ian Gary? <laughs> He's not here to take part. He's here to take over. What, what, what could I ever need from Ian Gary? I got to say this. The funniest thing that happened with Ian Gary, he makes his UFC debut. Uh, Ian Gary, we're never having you on the show, but uh, he makes his debut with herpes. Did you see this? Like, I literally... Yeah. <laughs> that's, you know, that's trying to be Conor McGregor, man, but, like, you don't have the money for it yet. You gotta go lower class a woman, and that's what happened. <laughs> I feel like he should have embraced the herpes. Like, I feel like, like, he's acting like it's not there. And how does the media members not say, Ian, can you tell me what's going on with your lip? That shit on your lip got some shit on this lip. <laughs> <laughs> there goes Ian Gary as a guest. Oh, well. What are it's you gonna do? He's, have you heard him speak? Like, it's fine. Like, it's... <laughs> Yeah, he, I mean, he's, he may be retarded. <laughs> I think he is. I think he is. Wow. I've been trying to think. Someone threw TJ Dillashaw out there. What, what do you think about TJ? Uh, I, I don't think about TJ Dillashaw. Like, you know, it's, I think he's good. I think he's a cheater, but he's good. So, like, hats off to him. We're doing it that long without getting caught. Like, shit. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah. he's still a sta savage, right? I mean, at the end of the day. Yeah, he's just a less juiced up savage, but he's still a beast. Like, like, like it. Who do you think would win? I mean, I guess I guess uh, Aljo and and uh, TJ are gonna go at it. So, who do you think would win that fight? Uh, I don't know. I should say I have to say Aljo because he's technically a teammate, but like TJ is one of my one of my favorite fighters. I just style wise, I don't know how that matches up. It's interesting. Like, I, I really don't know. I think after this interview tonight, I think you're going to be ranked. I feel like you're going to get a bonus in every fight. I mean, this is fantastic. I wish I was ranked, but no, the rankings came out yesterday and they fucked me again. So This is number one bullshit. I got a couple of other things in here, and I, I, I do want to ask you about the fights this weekend. I'm going to try to wrap this up as quick as possible. Oh, uh, super chat. We got Matt W. coming in. Uh, Shout out, to Philly. What you think of Sean Brady Curtis? Well, I think it's Sean Brady. Oh, God. So I hated Sean Brady for the longest because when Sean Brady fought for CFFC, he was their champion. And they would always post shit like, no one wants to fight Sean Brady, blah, blah, blah. So I'd immediately go post, I will fight Sean Brady. And then they delete my message. And this happened for years. So we were on, like, there's like C, there was like CES, CFFC, and LFA, or like the uh, ARC or whatever, what, just three shows. And I was trying to collect all the belts. And, like, Sean Brady had one of them. And they would never allow me to fight Sean Brady. They would be like, oh, we can't find an opponent. And I'd be like, I'll fight him. I'll fight him. They would delete my comments. I, it, it, oh, so it's like, rrr, 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 rrr. So, like, I still don't like Sean Brady. Wow. And I need to let it go because, like, you know, he's not making the matching. But, like, I feel like, you know, there was some bitchness involved there. But, like, rrr, fuck Sean Brady. Wow, that's interesting. Uh, oh, they, they would post that shit I'd, I'd fucking do shit And then they would delete my comment I'm like I'll fight him Then you know Send me a contract Delete my comment Back to no one will step up To fight Sean Brady I'm like are you fucking kidding me <laughs> Oh it happened for forever It drove me insane like, what? It was Such a hatred Like unique hatred For Sean Brady What drove you nuts About the regional scene like that was going because I've I've seen some matchmaking that I couldn't even believe. Like we would do events, and and I'm not going to say what organizations it was because I don't want to burn those bridges. But I, uh, they were like they treated us like gold, so we had to put up the the facade, the show, and everything like that. And then I would look at some of these matchups, and I was like, bro, how is this even sanctioned? Like, what was there a situation that you were involved in that you were like, I can't even believe I'm witnessing this? Uh, 
overall, man, it's just regional shows. Like the worst thing about being on the regional circuit is if you don't come from a place with a big show, you'll see that like the shows you need to like get established have their hometown guys, and they will do everything under the, in their power to build that guy and protect him. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's to be expected, but I hate when people are like building, building these guys, the next greatest thing, the unstoppable, whatever, but then they protect him and like never give him a challenge. Hmm. That fuck, oh, it kills me, man. It absolutely kills me. And you see it so much to where like shows will go out of their way to protect a guy and do all this bullshit. And like, you know, it's, it's absolutely insane. You know, someone brings it up. I want to ask you Eagle FC. What are your thoughts on Eagle FC? Oh, I've never actually watched Eagle. It's, I've mean, watched like two or three fights on Eagle, actually. Wrong. We had some teammates fight. Uh, I mean, I don't have a problem with it. I think uh, it's going to suck for some people. Like, for like, if, if, if you're good, then they can be a good pathway in. But I think a lot of guys who are going to get back home, they're going to get smashed against Dagestani wrestlers. So, like, you know, you know they, they pay well, they take care of you. It's a fun show. But you better 100% be ready to go fight a Dagestani wrestler. Yeah. <laughs> that is what's happening. And uh, make no bones about it. You are not the A side if you are not coming from Russia. Is it? Not, I mean, I, I we're, we're going to burn a lot of bridges tonight. But I, I, I can't help but think as we watch these events, as Ali Abdelaziz is sitting there and he's representing majority of these fighters. And they and I'm looking at the matchups and they're so fucking lopsided. Like like it's just like it's it bonkers some of these these matchups. I mean, how does that even work? Like, isn't that a, can you do that? Can you be part like managing like these fighters and then the promoter is a guy you're managing? Like it's like Habib is ma- being managed by Ali and Ali's fighters are on the card. It feels like it's so corrupt. No one actually knows the rules because like I think Ali got in trouble with this for PFL and he like stepped back. Because he managed, like, one of the seasons, he managed, like, 80% of the people in the finals. Mm-hmm. And I think after that, people got mad at him. And, like, he, he stepped back from, like, his position with PFL. Oh, did he? Okay. I didn't even know. he. So he was working with PFL? Yeah, he he, he had an official position with PFL. But a lot, most of his fight, and, and a lot of the tournament, like, like, 80% of the guys who were in the finals, like, 70% were his guys. Which became a conflict of interest, so he stepped back from his position in PFL. People were like, "Hey, that's bullshit," blah blah blah. But I mean, no one actually knows like what the official rules are. Eighty like, percent of MMA rules are just made up on the spot anyway. Mm-hmm. Like, people, people, no one actually knows. I feel like so. And hats off to him, I guess. Like you know, he's a. Uh, it's a thing. No one's managed to sue him or anything else. So like, what are you gonna do about it? Yeah, I guess if you're getting away with it, who cares, right? It doesn't. I mean, it is what it is. And people are who signing contracts. Be, yeah, so, who might be mad at you? Yeah. God knows. I mean, if you ever wind up in Eagle FC, I mean, now they're going to go back to this interview and they'll be like, uh, Chris, uh, what were you saying about uh, Ali Abdelaziz? Are you afraid to burn any bridges or are you like, fuck it, who cares? I like Ali. Like, I, 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 didn't say anything, I didn't say anything bad about Ali. I just said, I don't know the fucking rules. I like Ali. Like, Ali's okay. fine. Now, he's but, not uh, a terrorist rat snitch? I didn't do so. <laughs> so I don't like... I. The full story behind that, I've never actually bothered to look into too much. I've known Ali for three years now, almost four years. He's been nothing but cool to me, man. Like, I mean, like, there's been times I was thinking about retiring. I fucking hit him up, and I was like, you know, like, he hasn't even managed me, but I'm like, can you, like, talk to me? Like, what, what do I do? And, you know, he's been super honest, super open, super cordial. I don't have a problem with Ali. Like, he rubs people the wrong way. I think the thing about Ali you got to realize is if you're one of Ali's boys, he will go to the ends of the earth for you. Mm-hmm. He will do anything for you. If you're not Ali's boy, he will definitely sacrifice you to the greater gods in a heartbeat. So like, I think that rubs people the wrong way, but he he's all for his guys. Yeah, you know, it's funny you say that. I haven't met a person that has worked with Ali that said a negative thing about him. Not one person. It's just like the the online persona, the you know the Twitter taking over accounts, you know people criticizing for this and that. But people that work with him, I've never heard a bad thing, really. Bro, if you if you were if you're friends with Ali, that dude will go to the end of the earth for you. So yeah. I'll give him credit. I mean, like, what manager do you know that like runs practices for his fighters like mm-hmm. successfully? Like, bro, like he's he's just he's about it. He's involved in the sport. So hats off to him. I think he just rubs a lot of people the wrong way. But like, you know. It's you're not you're not gonna please everybody. Yeah, that's it's that's the name of the game, right? This is the fight game. This is not like uh, 
This is not Disney World. Uh, we got a couple other things coming in over here. This is wonderful. This wonderful. is Tropic Tom. Who does he have for MVP versus Sperry? Hoping for a double knockout. What would be the most satisfying double knockout for Chris? D dude, that, that so, oh my God. I don't like MVP. I think he's a big, big, one, of the, one of the biggest can crushers in modern sports. But even more than MVP, I fucking hate Mike Perry. <laughs> like, me and Mike Perry don't get along at all. Like, there's, there's like, legitimate beef. Fuck Mike Perry. And I almost want to, like, part of me almost wants to root for MVP, but, like, I, I can't because I hate him too. But I hate Mike Perry more, so I'm, like, torn. So I'm hoping, like, Maybe because maybe they both throw a punch and the ring explodes at the same time, and it's like it takes them. I don't know. Oh my god! I maybe I'm crazy, but uh, when they made this fight, I'm like, there is no possible way Mike Perry wins. Like I don't know. Maybe I'm nuts, but I feel like am I off on this? I mean, I I feel like MVP is gonna kill him. He's just gonna get. He's just gonna get beat. Um, MVP is gonna beat the shit out of him because he handpicks fights and like. I fucking hate Mike Perry. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but I get a headache every time I think about Mike Perry. He's just such a bitch. Why don't you do fight reactions? I mean, you would be hilarious just ripping apart, like, just bare knuckles on, and you're just like, fuck this guy. Like, that That people would tune into that. No, he's, uh, he's like, no, I'm disinterested, but, like, my, like, I, I wish I had time to explain the depths of my hatred for Mike Perry. <laughs> Has he ever done anything wrong to you, or you just despise him? Just yeah, see the bit. Oh my god, fuck my pit. I don't remember what started this beef initially, but I know it got to the point to where like he was fighting. Uh, he was fighting in uh in Nashville, and he talked some shit to me, and I was like, bro, I will come to Nashville. He's really gonna do shit. So I got tickets, and I went to the fight in Nashville, front row, and he called security on me like a bitch. He talked all this shit. He saw me in the front row and his team was out there doing shit. They called security and the UFC security guy came and talked to me. This is a few years. Wait, he's just, Mike Perry's just a bitch. Man. He's <laughs> such a bitch. And like, I hate him for it. And like, so the fucked up thing is, we have a group chat in Vegas with like a bunch of pro fighters. It's like me, Sean, Tavares, Puna. There's like 50 people in this group. And one day I opened the group chat and Mike Perry's in the group chat somehow. And we immediately lost our shit and started going at each other. And I was just like, I thought he was in Vegas. I was like, where the fuck are you? We can go fucking settle this now. Like, it's like two, but three weeks ago. And I'm like ready to throw down and fuck I, I thought he was in Vegas. But oh, duh, I fucking hate Mike Perry. So you're saying this just happened not that long ago? No, the the, the, the security thing was like three years ago, three no, or four years ago. The text like thing. The text, like a few weeks ago, yeah. <laughs> He's in a group chat one day that I lost my shit. And I was like, why the fuck is he here? Like, so who wound up letting him into the chat? Did you ever figure that out? Uh, it was fucking uh, one, of the, one of the other. It was some red guy who was in uh, Florida at the time, like, put him in to talk. Because he was like, him and Sean were talking about shit. Because Sean was going to Florida to train, so he put Mike Perry in the group chat to talk. And I just opened it up, and Mike Perry's there. And I'm like, why the fuck is Mike Perry here? Like, what's going on? And then I thought he was in Vegas. So I'm like ready to go. And Ray Seppo's like calm. Ray Seppo's laughing like, bro, this is fucking ridiculous. Like Ray Seppo's like shoving coal and you know, fuel to the fire. Like, yeah, 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 go do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're just like, wow, like, wild wow, not thinking he's in Vegas. I'm like, bro, I'm going to fuck you up. Like, show up. And then, uh, yeah, he wasn't in Vegas. But, oh, fuck my bear. So if the UFC were to say to you, say, you know, if, if say, for instance, David Feldman reaches out to the UFC, he's like, hey, we're doing this with Bellator. Um, we would like to have Chris fight Mike Perry in bare knuckle, and the UFC says, "You know what? Go ahead, go beat him up in bare knuckle." He the shit out of Mike Perry. <laughs> I'd be there in a heartbeat. Like, oh my god, you don't understand. Oh, there oh no. Oh, we lost Chris. He wants to beat up Mike Perry. Hello. There you are. My bad. I'm getting phone calls. Sorry, my bad. That's that's actually your agent saying, "Chris, abort, abort." <laughs> <laughs> so you're with Iridium, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who do I get to talk? Like, so I we sent an email out to Iridium. We just been working around them, getting to you guys. But they seem like they protect you guys. Like, I can't get to you guys without you know going directly to the fighter. Is it difficult to talk to these people at Iridium? Uh, no, there's like different managers, like like different like uh 
like liaisons, I guess. Like okay. mine is Lance. You know Lance. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. So I'll, I'll just go through Lance. Like, yeah, Lance sells it because, like, there's an official, like, media guy, like a liaison, but, like, I don't really – I think it's, like, Ed – but I don't answer Ed's texts or emails, so like it's probably hard. He's, it's probably less his fault and more I don't respond to Ed. Oh, okay, yeah, because Ed, I think this is the guy that we reached out to, and it was like been a complete disconnect. So you're saying Lance at Iridium, right? Yeah, I, yeah, Lance deals like everything for me. Lance deals with like Lance is like one of my best friends, like my friends like family to me. So like, if anybody needs anything, Lance is the one to go to because like I I don't read emails, I don't read texts. Like people are like you've been ignoring texts for three weeks. <laughs> So I'm like, yeah, well, you're not Lance. So <laughs> that's good to have someone like that in your corner, though, that you trust, though, right? Dude, Lance, Lance is like close thing. I got the family in Vegas, man. And like, uh, yeah, like him and his wife are like my, like my family out here. So yeah, that's awesome. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna play a couple more of these things, and they're they're coming in over here. We got uh, this is wonderful. This wonderful. is from Silky Johnson. You are welcome to attend the annual 2022 Haters Ball Christmas Eve, Action Man. Yeah. I got, oh, I, will, I am a honorary, like, I, I will be at the Haters Ball. Like, you understand. I will show up with a hat, the cape, the cane. The, my people have been hating since before the beginning of time. We've been hating as soon as time started. Do you, do I hate you, I don't even know why. I hate myself. <laughs> Do you think that you're going to start, like, I, I feel like now post-fight interviews, like, you've been a lot more loose. Are you going to just start, like, just talking shit about people? Or are you just going to let let it go? Like, fuck, you're not going to rank me. I'm going to have a little fun with this. You feel like you're unraveling a little? I don't talk, I don't actively talk shit. I complain. I don't talk shit. I just complain. Sometimes my complaining sounds like shit talking, but usually it's just me complaining. <laughs> All right, that's fair enough. Actually, yeah, that makes sense. That goes back to the Seinfeld thing. You know, complaining is better. You just get it off your chest. It's fine. <laughs> we got um, this one here is from wonderful, wonderful. from Sinosi. Ali the Rat with a one to three MMA record. Put me in a boxing match with him. I'll deck his rat face. Also get Chris Curtis and Sean Strickland together on a Mahal interview. We need IT. <laughs> yeah, we pitched that before. That would be something so, else. All, fun story about that. I don't know why Ali's record was so bad. I think he was a guy who just didn't perform well under pressure, like in the lights. But the first time I met Ali, I, was, I didn't know who he was. I was in Vegas, didn't know who the fuck he was. And I was sparring at Extreme. He's like, going to go around, like, first round. I was like, okay, fine. Like, you know, first round is usually – and sparring, the first round is usually like a warm-up round, like, right? Like, it's kind of the unspoken thing. Like, we go light, whatever, warm up. I had no idea who he was. I'm just like, maybe just a random guy, like, you know, wanting to work out. That motherfucker tried to take my head off. Really? <laughs> he was trying to kill me. And I've been trying to get that rematch for like three years. It's <laughs> like, bro. I'm always like, I'm going to find you, but I'm going to get this rematch. He tried to whoop my ass. Like, Ali can actually fight. It's weird. He can actually fight. He's a good grappler. He's got, he can box. I've never really, like, followed his career. So I don't know what happened. But he's actually like, if that dude tried to whoop my ass, I was shocked. Wow. You know, I've I've seen the footage of him, like, rolling around with Habib and doing all this crazy stuff. Like, it seems like he still st stays in pretty good shape. How tall is this guy? I, he's small, though, right? He's, oh, he's like, my height. He's not, he's not that big. He's, like, my height, roughly. Oh, okay. For some yeah, reason, I, everyone was saying he was, like, super short. But he's what? So he's around 5'9", five, 5'10"? Five, five, ten? Five, five, ten around there, yeah. Okay. Um, And so I do want to show... Where the fuck is it? No, I lost it. Oh, so... I, I, I want to get your opinion on this really quick. I, I threw it on the thumbnail. A pregnant uh, Luke Rockhold. I don't know if you know knew this, but Luke Rockhold apparently... <laughs> Luke Rockhold had an abortion. He had an abortion. Did you know this? Luke Rockhold aborted. <laughs> Is he on your list? Holy... Holy no, he's... I don't have anything personal beef with Luke Rockhold. I just think he's an idiot. <laughs> He said, I did have an abortion, and I did have a big breakup. So he had an abortion. Like, I, I didn't even know a man could do this, but in 2022, I guess it's possible, right? He had a, an abortion. I mean, this is wild news, no? Our ancestors conquered the world. We conquered an untamed planet. Think about that. No matter where you're from, no matter what your nationality is, your ancestors went out into the fucking wild. And we fought lions and wolves and tigers and bears and shit. And we conquered an untamed planet and made it our own. 
And now this motherfucker's like, I had an abortion and a bad breakup. Like, how did we get here? <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I, I would imagine with Luke. His ancestors weep. <laughs> Do you think with a guy like Rockhold, do you think it's the years of trauma to his head that maybe it's just sped up this this crazy weirdness in him? Or do you think he was always like this? I don't fucking I don't know the guy really. Who knows? Hmm. Like who the who the fuck knows? But fuck man. Oh my god. <laughs> when he came into the UFC, when he was coming from Strike Force. What's that? <laughs> Abortion and a bad breakup. Like, what? <laughs> I, I read it. I was like, is this guy for real? And then you got like MMA Islands throwing it out there. Like, oh my God, you know, it's so great that Luke Rockhold opened up. I'm like, about him having an abortion? Like, what? No, bro, you're a man. You keep that shit <laughs> inside like the rest of us until you have a stroke at 45 from stress. <laughs> like, that's the way I. That's the way I'm gonna do it. That's the way our parent, our fathers did it. That's the way our grandfathers did it. Like, what is this? <laughs> Oh, oh my god. god. Yeah, you can't make it up. You really can't. I was waiting for people to like start shitting on him about this, but yeah, I, I, I thought I was reading it wrong. But yeah, he, he had an abortion, so tough times. Have you ever had a, an abortion or no? I don't not, not that I know of personally, like <laughs> shit. I don't know. I've made some weird decisions in my life. I think I had a kid in Brazil, maybe. Like I'm not sure. Like, honestly, I, I'm not even a joke. I may have a kid in Brazil. Like we've never been brought up, so we just don't talk about it. So wait, what happened? You were intimate with someone in Brazil, and what you just like just let it go? Like it happened, should happen. <laughs> like later, like you know, whatever. And then like you know, we're friends on Facebook later, and then like on Instagram, like two years later, I see, it's like a year, it's like two years later, I see a picture of her with like the guy who just proposed to her. And she's like this two year old, right? I mean, she's a light, she's a light skinned Brazilian chick, and he's a dark skinned Brazilian chick, a dark skinned Brazilian guy, and this kid is pitch black. He's like dark, and I'm like, that's not his kid. No, he's he's not. He's light skin. He's light skin. He's very light skin. Okay. He's very very light skin. But this kid's dark, like me so, dark. And so he's got like curly hair, like tight curly hair, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, and I'm like, this is like a happy family. So I didn't say anything. I'm like, you know what? It's fine. That's it is what it is. Like um, no one brought it. I'm fucking, I, she didn't bring it up. I'm like, you know what? That's uh, that's fine. What would you like, do if you? you... 18 years, like on my doorstep, willing to challenge me to a fist fight for like whatever. Then you know, we'll fight like you know, like on top of a mountain. That's cool. <laughs> but I just, you know, for now, I'm just like, you know, don't ask, don't tell. Like, all right. <laughs> that's freaking wild, man. Oh my god, that's crazy. I bet I bet you have some scenarios from when you were younger that you done some crazy shit though. Like right, I mean the action man, you have probably been involved in some wild stories. I don't know how I'm not dead. <laughs> like there there are just things to where I don't know how I haven't died yet. And uh I like to think I have like a special power, man, like called fortunate son. Like as long as I think I'm special, the universe will like you know it'll like abide by it. So I just, I don't think about the consequences, just live. <laughs> and like, you know, so far, they don't usually catch up to me until I stop. Is Mackenzie Dern's baby yours? <laughs> Not that I know of. I wasn't that drunk. <laughs> Have you ever she had... Was in Brazil. She, she, she was in Brazil, though. She was in Brazil at the time. You, but that oh, wasn't particularly Dern. Oh, so have you, so have you dated another uh, UFC fighter? No, no. Okay. No, I haven't. No, 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 I haven't. So would you would you date like a celebrity? Like, so say someone that's just like a megastar. Someone like is just. Yeah, I'm paid. Oh, I'm paid for. <laughs> let me be care. Let me be a cat man. Let me let me find out just a oh, super rich chick. Like you know what? People are like, I can't let my chick pay for me. I might pay for everything. Change my life, girl. <laughs> yeah. So no pride, right? Who cares, right? If they if they if they're well off and they're doing their thing, why the fuck not, right? You know what? My pride. I can I can heal my pride on my 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 uh you know like 800 square foot yacht. Like yeah, I'll, I'll heal my pride on my yacht on the ocean. <laughs> Would, would you be a Mr. Mom if she was like, listen, I got you, man. You don't have to do UFC ever again. You can just stay home with the kids or whatever. Just hang out. Would you do that? Sir, I've been a Mr. Mom to a, like, broke being a Mr. Mom taking care of my kids. So, like, yeah, like, if you're going to take care of me, I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm, I'll be off on the ocean doing crazy shit. Like, 
They're like, oh, like you gave everything up. I gave everything up for a mansion. Yes. <laughs> Do you, do you find women now are kind of like, now you're kind of getting into the world of the, I'm not bottle rats, but the money hungry women that are like, oh, you're a UFC fighter. You know, I would love to get to know you better. Do you sniff them out? Uh, I mean, like, I don't think I'm rich enough yet quite for that. Like, you know, they got to wait a little bit for me to get bigger, to, bigger uh, paychecks. But I, I know they're coming, and uh, I plan on using them so they can use me, so it's fine. <laughs> there you go. I like the way you think. All right, real quick. <laughs> Who wins a Saturday night? I mean, you got Sean, you got Perea. Who wins and how? Uh, I think Sean just – who the fuck knows, honestly. Sean should win, but, like, it's also Sean, so he could go out there and just try to have a kickboxing match. I think Sean just beat him pretty much anywhere almost. But like, realistically, Sean should be able to TKO this kid in like two rounds. Okay, there we go. Two rounds. Love it. And what about the main event over here? As we have Israel Adesanya, which I look at him and say, I don't know how Cannoneer is going to beat this man, but it is four ounce gloves. It's in an octagon. Anything can happen. Does Jared Cannoneer stand a chance? First of all, hold on. West Coast, you don't need to, you don't need to know how to swim on a yacht. And if you drown, you have people to save you. Guess what being rich is all about? So I need to know how to swim. Yes, I can swim. Just say it. Second. Is that the, is the stereotype? Is that what they're going with there? I can swim. I don't float. <laughs> you do a mean doggy paddle, or can you actually go for it? Bro, like, no. If, if you there's, there's no doggy paddle, I have no buoyancy. Like, it's not a thing. Like, people thought it was a joke. You put me in the water and, like, realize, like, even in the ocean, I don't float. I just sink. How the fuck do you pack on all that muscle? Is it genetics, or are you just fucking pumping iron left and right? What's going on? <laughs> I, I, I lift during, they got me lifting during camp, but I don't lift. I've never been a lifter. I, I hate lifting. I actually hate it. Just be black. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying the key is being black, right? Slavery was a terrible thing, but I have reaped genetic benefits from down the line. Like, so it was fucking terrible. But uh, to be that bad, I got some uh, genetic benefits out of it. Like, well, Dude, what happens when you selectively breed a people for a few hundred years? Like, that shit doesn't just go away. Like, yeah, so <laughs> it's shitty, but I, I got the better part of that. So, so you're saying you have the extra bone, right? Well, I got the extra, the extra bone, the extra <laughs> ligament in the knees. Like, yeah, bro, I got like my ancestors are out there fucking working because like, I'm fucking strong. Oh, uh, okay. I'm really strong, just fucking got great genetics. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so they can people for a few years and for a few uh, generations, and then they take over all the sports. Like, well, that's what happens. They they gave uh, Izzy the uh, the jacket, the USADA testing jacket. Do you think it's a bunch of horse shit? Do you think they're just they're they're fucking around here? Or is that real? Oh, uh, who the fuck knows? They test me. They test me a lot. So, like, who the fuck knows, man? Like, I there's i'm pretty sure there's ways to cheat usada like look, look how long tj got away with it so i'm pretty sure that like, once you got enough money there's pretty good ways to cheat usada mm. all right well anyway who do you think wins the main event then uh my head says izzy my heart says jared head says izzy your heart says jared and have you trained have you ever trained with jared i have trained with him uh, like uh i think twice I, I think he's a good dude i think He's one of those guys who lives and dies by his power, and that may that's a good and bad thing. Because I think Jerry Cannonier knows if Jerry Cannonier hits you, everything changes. Mm -hmm. So I think Izzy is technically like the better fighter, but Jared's a guy who's like I don't think he's afraid of Izzy because Jared's like if I touch you, you'll you'll die. So I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna lean towards Jared to see. I I, I want to believe that he can just lay he can he can do it. Like I think he's not afraid of Izzy. I think Jared's like, fuck it, I fought heavyweights, I'll fight you. So, so you're, I'm going to Jared. So you're saying Jared Cannonier by spinning back elbow, right? Not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> spinning elbow, yeah. All right. So, so I don't know, elbow terminology is weird. I don't know. I suck at Muay Thai, who knows? <laughs> so when are you looking to get back in there? Anytime, when, whenever they, they say, hey, Chris, let's go, you're in? For August uh, in the uh, Salt Lake, I would like to do that. Like you know, the sooner the better. So hopefully, I can get in in August. Uh, but we'll see. The sooner the better, man. Like I, I want to get back in there. I'm back in the gym already. Not taking any time off. So I'll, I'll stay ready. So I'm gonna get ready. Hell yeah. Well, Chris. Hey, man. Thanks again for coming back on. It's it's a blast talking with you. Okay. Thanks for having me. Thank you guys for being in the chat. Thanks for the donations, and the memberships, and uh, all the fun questions. You guys are fucking great. MMA holes. You were awesome. Thanks for having me back. I appreciate it. All right, there he is, the action man, Chris Curtis, on the MMA Holes Live. What do you guys say? The best of the best right there, the cream of the crop.
Chris Curtis on the show. It's always good catching up with Chris. I mean, Jesus. So much fun. So much fun. Him and Tony Gravely, I mean, there's so much to talk about with both of those interviews. You got his picks tomorrow uh, for Saturday night. Best interview ever. Yeah, he just took the gloves off. He's like, yeah, fuck Mike Perry. Fuck this person. Love that, man. Love that about the action man. And a uh, great guy. Real good dude. Uh, let's get some comments in the chat room. I feel like we've negated my beautiful friends of the chat. What do you think about the interviews? What do you think about the fights this weekend? What do you think about Luke Rockhold being pregnant? Or was pregnant? Uh, CC Cream of the Crop. Best interview ever. Always fun. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Dominic Reyes. Big fan of your work. Can't wait to see you get back in the cage. Might be better than felony. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, Chris, uh, he don't give a fuck, man. He don't give a fuck. He's a, he's a good dude. Awesome interview. Thank you, Alfredo. Appreciate that, man. I tell you what. I tell you what. One thing about the MMA holes. You're not gonna you're not gonna see conversations or hear conversations on the other shows like this. We just go there. We just talk like human beings, not fucking robots over here. We're here to have a good time. And we're here for you guys to get to know these athletes. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, these guys are going in a cage and beating each other up. It's just wild what they do for a living. Seeing that they are human beings just like you and me, you know, seeing that they have everyday lives, they, they like movies, they like music, they like the normal things we like as well. You know, it's kind of cool getting to know them on that level. So the fact that they come on and share their stories is pretty cool. <laughs> Zero interviews. Yeah. I mean, what are you going to do with that guy? I don't know. Poor dude. Uh, let's go. Oh, we do have an announcement, too. I don't know. I think Jesse's still putting the baby to sleep. But tomorrow. All right. So tomorrow we have a stream scheduled for the press conference. We're going to be live. Sean Strickland's going to be there. Sean O'Malley's going to be there. I mean, it. the press conference tomorrow is like my most anticipated press conference of all time. Like this is going to be fire. The UFC has listened to us. They listened to the MMA holes and they said, you want Sean there? We're going to put him there. And we'll put both of those guys there. It is going to be nuts tomorrow. You're going to have Izzy. He's going to be saying his anime stuff. He'll be interesting. Cannoneer is going to be fucking staring at a rock or something. I don't know. He's going to be doing something. But you're going to have Sean O'Malley. You're going to have Sean Strickland who hit it out of the park with his media day. Uh, the guy is nuts. The guy is fucking out of his mind. So uh, tomorrow's going to be wild. We have the stream scheduled. Go over there and hit the like button. We'll be watching. Uh, take some calls after there, that uh, press conference and get your ideas on who you got winning and what you think of it. It's going to be so good. So that's happening tomorrow on this show. It's going to be wonderful, wonderful. wonderful and uh, wonderful. tomorrow we'll, we'll announce our new sponsor. We have another sponsor. By the way, guys, we have been hitting the ground running over here. Because of you, the people that keep on coming back and hitting the like button and supporting us, you guys are dropping the donations, keeping us alive, keeping our fucking noses and mouth above the water so we can fucking breathe. With that fucking support, we've been able to harness some crazy sponsors. We got CBDX, and if you guys haven't tried CBDX, seriously, check it out, man. CBDX.com, the promo code is M-M-A-H-O-L-E-S for 20% off, and you get a gift on your first... Uh, Purchase from them, really good stuff. I actually gave some of their product, the Delta 8 and the HHC, to Jesse's mom, so she'll be trying it as well. This stuff does get you high, so just a warning, but it makes you feel good. Um, yeah, Sonosi's a brand new sponsor of the show. Uh, thank you, Sonosi. But we have a really cool one that's dropped tomorrow that you guys will be like, what? Are you kidding me? Real cool sponsor that we'll have for the uh, pay-per-view event that's coming up, UFC 276. So we'll be announcing that tomorrow, and I think you guys will be a fan of that. A uh, big shout out to Head Rush as well. Head Rush has been with us for multiple years now. Head Rush, 20% off. Their promo code is the same. M-M-A-H-O-L-E-S for their product. We have two links in the description for them. And Sheath Underwear, best underwear in the game. Sheath Underwear, same thing. 20% off. The promo code is M-M-A-H-O-L-E-S. This stuff, you put your you put your genitals in there, man. You just tuck them away. They're great. You know, it separates from the action. What's going on? You don't have to worry about like, you know, I don't know that 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 stank down below. You know, you can separate things. Everything's good. It's comfortable. Check it out for yourself. They got lady stuff. They got boy stuff. Go check it out in the description. Fantastic interview. Uh, asking the fun questions, not the same as old BS. Yeah, I mean. And I noticed, like, in the media scrums, I noticed a lot of these guys are trying to ask different questions. These fighters, 
they don't want to be asking about you know talking about weight cutting and and you know like it's just like the same nonsense over and over and over again they want to talk about normal shit too you know so it's cool to to talk about that stuff with them uh shroom brownies for fourth uh, july weekend gonna be fun yeah we got shows so tomorrow we're doing the press conference friday we got fuka friday there's probably gonna be a fight on as well so we'll do a fight reaction saturday is ufc 276 jesse will be on board for the entire fight, uh, she's gonna have uh, some. We'll have a babysitter, so we'll be all hands on deck. It's gonna be a massive night Saturday, um, and then Sunday we'll be on the second channel. We're gonna be playing Jackbox Party again. By the way, we gotta get some UFC fighters in our Jackbox streams. Like that would be the shit. It's a trivia night. We should get some fucking big names to play along on Jackbox. I mean, I think, who doesn't like game shows? Who doesn't like getting, you know, fucking winning prizes and shit like that? So that'd be fun. Uh, maybe maybe we'll set something up for Sunday. Get a celebrity appearance in the games. Uh, Curtis seems like a really cool dude. Uh, got a root for that guy. Yeah, a him and Gravely. If you missed Tony Gravely's appearance, I promise you, you'll become a fan after the interview. The guy's a real straight up dude, cool guy. His wife is in his corner on every fight. I mean, it's it's, it's a cool story. Let's go Jackbox party. Hell yeah. So to look at this card over here again, um, I'm, I haven't really changed much with what I think about who's going to win these fights. I listened to Cowboy Cerrone and Jim Miller a little bit, trying to see if I could pull some information out of that. I'm going to wait for the face-offs to make like actual, uh, the actual predictions. So Friday we'll be doing our legit predictions. But the top three, I got Izzy. I'm going to go Max. In the co-main, probably not advisable. Maybe it's because I am just more of a fan of Holloway. Nothing against Volkanovski. I think the guy's a savage. He's a stud. He hasn't lost in the UFC. He's owned Max twice, even though the second one was close. Um, but I, I kind of like Max for some reason. I'm feeling him. I don't know what it is. So I go uh, Holloway on that one. Another one, I, I probably am going the wrong way, but I'm picking Sean Strickland. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to give it to the guy with the more MMA experience. I'm going to have to give him the benefit of the doubt. There's a part of me that's pulling me in Alex, uh, Alex's favor in his direction. The guy is very scary. But I think Sean is going to be ready. I do. I feel like uh, Strickland's going to be ready for this fight. You never know, but I'm going to pick uh, Sean Strickland in that one. And uh, Brian Bar Barbarina Lawler, I'm kind of leaning towards Brian. Brian being the underdog in this thing. I'm, I'm actually leading towards Barbarina. He's on a two-fight win streak. Uh, Matt Brown and Darian Weeks. Last loss was Jason Witt uh, with 10 months ago. Robbie Lawler coming off the loss, to, the win to Nick Diaz. But, I mean, it was Nick Diaz, and Nick is a shell of what he used to be. And then you got that long losing streak. Uh, the Ben Askren one, you can kind of give him a pass on. That was a weird one. But Neil Magny, still a solid guy. He didn't look good against Shavka, but still a solid guy. Colby Covington's a G. Uh, that was a weird fight. Another weird one. I can't believe that was two years and ten months ago. The Colby Covington Robbie Lawler fight. Damn, that feels like it was yesterday. That was when Colby like set a record for strikes. But I don't know. I, I'm not sold. I'm not sold on Robbie, man. Like I know he beat Nick, but that doesn't give me the information. Sean O'Malley and Pedro. We had Pedro's teammate on tonight. It's uh, Tony Gravely. Um, I'm still kind of leaning towards Sean. I know Pedro hasn't been knocked out, but I got it. I know, and I know Chris Curtis can't stand O'Malley. But I, I still think he's a problem. And unless Pedro cracks him or gets him down, I mean, I don't know. I think Sean's length will be the difference. I think he'll fight smart. I think he'll avoid the leg kicks that he needs to avoid. He's going to get chewed up a little bit, but I think he'll find a way to check the appropriate kicks and he'll get the job done. So I'm going to probably pick uh, Sean O'Malley in this fight as well. So those are guys like right off the top. We'll go into the rest of the card. As the week progresses, I do want to get some information from the actual press conference because a lot of times, you know, we'll see something with that in confidence. We'll see something at the weigh-ins, some evidence there. So official predictions will be on Friday night, this Friday before the big UFC 276 event. Uh, in the chat, if you haven't hit the like button yet, you're useless to me. You're dead to me. Get the fuck out of here. If you if you want to, would like to hit the uh, like button and help out the uh, channel, just smash that thing up. I'd appreciate it. Last comments from the chat, and then we are out of here. I think Sean getting knocked out just got a feeling. I mean, it's possible. Pere is he's scary. Dropping any coin? Uh, we probably place a bet. Probably place a bet. I'm I'm kind of backing off. We'll tell you after our sponsor what we might be throwing our money towards instead, and it's not gambling. It's a whole different thing that we're looking into investing in. 
Um, and you know, we'll, t- we'll talk about it tomorrow. We'll pick your brain on that. But yeah, if you're a, if you're not a gambler and you want to be interested in some other way, you know, to kind of collect a little hint, um, tune in tomorrow. How you doing, John? What's going on, my friend? Hope you're doing well. Uh, can we send cum tributes to Rockhold? I mean, I don't see why not. I don't think he would mind, right? I shared your show. Thank you, Ann H, for sharing the show on social. Really do appreciate that. Anyone that shares the show on social media, we really do appreciate that. Just spread the word, man. You know, we work hard over here behind the scenes. We try to give you the best content we could put forward, the most most truthful content, content that makes you smile and laugh as well. You know, cringe a little bit. That's what we try to do over here. So share, like the streams. Very important. Strickland getting the uh, fuck KO'd out of him this week uh, weekend. Finally, he better hug nuts to play it safe. So, okay, it's interesting that Kenny True says that. Because there are some people out there that really, really don't like Sean Strickland. I've noticed that. And Jesse, kind of, I could tell she's on the fence. I'll let her you know, explain herself a little better tomorrow. But from what I get, she thinks he's putting on a shtick, which I don't think he's doing. I honestly think he's that crazy. Chris kind of... Um, Back that theory up. So, I mean, I would imagine Chris would know better than all of us. Chris Curtis, he's buddies with them. But um, I don't know. I don't get the vibe that it is, like, put on. I feel like he's that crazy. You know, I feel like he's nutty. I don't think he's putting on a facade. Like, that's him. And for some reason, there are there is a big uh, portion of people that just can't want to see him get knocked the fuck out. Uh, and maybe, too, maybe it's because of the political stuff as well. That might be it. Which I get it, you know. Some people, you know, are you know against what Sean believes in. Uh, I like Sean, but his ego is way too big. Good luck. So, Kenny, let me ask you a question here. Okay, that's interesting. You like him, but you think his ego is too big. If you are a cage fighter, right? If you're a guy that goes out there, or a gal that goes out there and competes, uh, fights another human being to get paid. Um, to move up a ranking system, to win a championship, to get paid even more money. You know, you have to kind of play this game. If you just go out there and hit the mic and say, well, you're like super duper humble. I mean, I guess it works for some people. But if Sean wasn't running his mouth the way he was and being himself and and true to his own character, which is not likable in some situations, but that's just him, he wouldn't be spoken about as much. He wouldn't be fighting for a number one contender spot. So if you think about it, Sean is just being himself to sell himself, which is the perfect thing to do if you're a fighter. If you're a humble person, you sell that humbleness like um, a Chase Hooper. Like you sell being, that's, you're a humble, you're a sweet person, you like to have a little fun on social media, it's working for Chase. Uh, For Sean, it's the other ass, the, the complete opposite, but that's, he's being himself. I think that's the best advice you can give to a fighter. You oversell yourself who you are as a fighter and the benefits will come in, especially if you win. And that's where Sean uh, sits here. I see John Montgomery saying, saying, why does ego matter? You need ego, ego, right? You're a fighter. Like if you didn't believe in yourself and if you didn't ooze an ego to, to believe in yourself that you can achieve these things, you may not be able to pull those things off, those crazy moments in your career. So, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't have, I can understand why people don't like him because of he goes too far with not being politically correct. But the ego thing, I mean, I, I can kind of give him a pass. We all get nervous he's fake. So you think he's fake? I mean, his persona, what I see with Sean, his persona, it might hide some inner insecurity. Like he might over put this persona out there to hide some deep, dark, dark demon inside of him, which is very possible. So maybe that's fake. This whole shield that he puts up, you know, people might perceive as fake and it's just, it's just a protective barrier. So no one can get into his soft heart. He's got this stone wall around it. Maybe that's what it is. But I mean, if he's like this in his personal life, he's like this on the mic, he's, he's like this on his social, like no matter where you see Sean, he's always, he's like this in the supermarket. I mean, how fake can it be, you know? No way Sean's fake. He's real. I don't care about politics. It was when he said he wanted to kill someone in the cage. Yeah, yeah, some things you probably shouldn't say. 
especially in 2022. You can't say, hey, I want to murder somebody. But it's not like he's going out murdering people. It's not like he's doing it. You know, it's it's one thing to say it. It's another thing to do it. Now, if he's killing people, yeah, that's a problem. Got to do something about that. And I don't think Sean's the type of person that's going to fucking kill somebody. Like, I, I don't know. I don't I don't see that. You can't say he's fake unless you know him. And that's the thing, John, right? I mean, we don't know. We're just assuming. Like, I can't. I, there are guys that I don't like in the UFC that I'm not the biggest of fans. I'm like, ah, I don't know. That's kind of that's kind of forced. Maybe you see that with Sean. Maybe you think he's a little forced. I don't know. I don't really see it. I just think he's loony. Uh, yeah, certain ego for sure. Not where we're invincible, which he seems to be. I think he's, like I said, there's probably something else going on inside of him where he's just like, you know, he's, I don't know. He's, it's like a, a, a self-defense mechanism, you know. But in fairness, he goes, if you have a problem with me, we'll fight. Come to the gym. We'll settle it. He'll fight guys two times his size. He doesn't give a fuck. So I don't understand how you could say someone's a fake human being when you see him sparring with guys twice his size and he's going fucking hardcore on these guys. You know, I, I don't understand how that could be fake in any way. It seems like the realest possible you can be. He called Kevin Holland. What did he say about Kevin Holland? He said, oh, God. I think he like called him a gay superhero or something like that. I don't know. That's probably pissed a bunch of people off. I have no idea. <clears throat> Sean is the man woke bitch that society needs to more like him. He's definitely on uh, one of my kinds, his toe cutter. Yeah, I mean, even if you don't agree with his political things, if I had, a, I just recently had a conversation with a family member. It was just a debate, and it, it got a little political, right? It got a little bit. It went there, right? But I'm the type of person that wants to hear the other side, too. I don't want to just say, okay, it's about... Me and, and and no one else can have an opinion. No, I, I did want to hear what he had to say and what he thought about it. And then when he was coming back with some really weird shit, I was like, okay, this guy's kind of lost his mind a little bit here. But politics is like you can't talk politics with someone that just does like it's just takes it so serious. You know, like that takes it to the level of I'm right, you're wrong, go fuck yourself, let's fight. You know, like you can't debate with someone like that. And maybe Sean's that type of person. Maybe Sean is like looking for the fight. Like, oh, we're going to talk politics. Now let's go. You don't dance with that person. You don't, you just don't do that. You just let them do their thing. You know, it, it is what it is. They're entitled to their opinion and that's it. You move on. You, you don't, you don't sit in the pocket with someone like that. Uh, a bunch of white boys, boys jumping in all of a sudden. I'll be here Saturday to see what's up. And now I don't even know what this guy's even saying anymore. What is he even saying? Uh, that's how you don't spare. Uh, good luck. I'll give him five years. Max, mark my shit. He said five years. He says, what does he have? Top five years? He actually said that. Dude, you really hate this guy. So you think he's fake when he pretty much showed you that he's real. <laughs> yeah, politics is nuts, man. People just get so fucking serious. Okay, you don't like the guy. That's cool. I mean, it's like... <laughs> It's crazy. It's like, ah, I disagree with you. You're a bunch of white boys. All right, cool. Weird, but okay. I don't like Max Holloway. <laughs> you don't like Max? You know, Max Holloway's an interesting one. He's weird. He's a weird dude. He's weird. I don't think he's a bad person. He seems like a really cool dude. Cool guy. Um... But I could understand why people are just like, yeah, I don't get it. Like the weird pigeon talk and stuff. And he's awkward in interviews. Maybe some people don't like his fighting style. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I mean, if you, uh, hold on. If you were Sean's mate, he would definitely help you in a street fight. Not like most people these days. Yeah, I mean, I would honestly, me in my corner, I want people that are real with me. I don't. If you surround yourself with phonies and yes men, you're surrounding yourself with the worst people. I've been around people like that. And when shit hits the fan, they're nowhere to be found. If shit hit the fan and Sean Strickland is in the car next to you, like if, 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 you're, if you're driving somewhere and the fucking zombie apocalypse happens, who do you want next to you? Do you want Joe fucking offended or do you want fucking Sean Strickland there? I'll take Sean. I would take Sean. 
So, so here's the thing. Like, you may not agree with his political uh, opinions. I probably have things that I don't agree with Sean with. But I would take a guy that's real to me than someone that's just fucking, like, you know. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, why would you want to be surrounded by yes men and fucking, I don't know, weak people? It doesn't make any sense. Sean Strickland is a breath of fresh air. I hope Max gets the uh, carnage Saturday. I hope so, too. I kind of hope Max does win that fight. You want Woody Harrelson? Who would you want sitting next to you in a zombie apocalypse? You know what? Forget it. I'm going to take Chris Curtis. Put Chris Curtis next to me, and we're going to fucking kick some ass. Uh, let's see. Yeah, exactly. Tell me the truth. Yeah, I mean, right? That's what you would want in your corner. You don't want people telling you you're up fucking two rounds going into the third. Next thing you know, you lose the fight by a decision. You don't want that. Woke back broke. Story of Habib's life. I will take the real person than a fake person. Yeah, that's what Ann says. I'm with you. These guys are all cupcakes. He's calling people Susie's. And <laughs> it's weird. It's like it's almost like he's got Tourette's showing. Like he just starts fucking rambling off and just going down this road. You're like, oh boy, here he goes. Max versus Volk 55 at UFC 450. Watching Izzy take every chance he gets to talk shit about Perea is fucking hilarious. He for sure butthurt about the L's. He did. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see tomorrow. The problem is Perea's lack of English is going to be a trouble. I'm really hoping that Sean is the fucking key to that press conference tomorrow. I hope Sean... I think what's going to happen, though, is Sean's going to fucking go in on O'Malley. I think it's going to get, like, sidetracked, and Sean's going to make fun of <laughs> O'Malley's tattoos. And I really want to see Sean go after Izzy. Like, I want to see that dynamic, but they're both paradigm sports... Izzy was saying nice things about uh, Strickland, so I don't know. Is Sean going to show up with headphones on like he said? This is what uh, Strickland put out on his social media. Love him or hate him. He's an interesting dude, for sure. Here's actually a couple of clips here. Let's... And here's the fucking thing. Let me tell you guys something. There's not one glory fucking kickboxer in any fucking weight class that I couldn't stand and bang with. So don't fucking tell me just because you're some big fucking Brazilian you knocked out Izzy 20 years ago that fucking I can't stand with you. Come on. How do you not love that? How do you not fucking love that? Thing, man. Here's the fucking thing. Let me tell you guys something. There's not one glory fucking kickboxer in any fucking weight class that I couldn't stand and bang with. So don't fucking tell me just because you're some big fucking Brazilian you knocked out Izzy 20 years ago that fucking I can't stand with you. I mean, I don't understand. Like, how do you not fucking... Like... If people are like, oh, what a prick. Like, what? That's what you want. That's what you want. He's being as raw as possible. He believes in himself, and he thinks he can get the victory. He doesn't fear this man. You guys are all awesome. If I offended you, I'm sorry. Don't be such a pussy. There you go. Don't be a pussy. That's it. Don't be a pussy. Here's the rant before when he found out about uh, being in the press conference. Uh, for tomorrow. I got some bad fucking news. The UFC wants me a part of the press conference. And I'm a little fucking scared. And I'll tell you why I'm scared. Because I'm not talking to you social degenerates on Instagram. I'm talking to the overlords. ESPN. Fucking Walt Disney, man. You know, and if I fuck up and I say something wrong, I'm going to get fucking Gina Carano. And I don't want that. So I really need to sit there and just shut the fuck up. I might even bring headphones and just like loud music the whole time. So I'm a little nervous, you guys. I need to do the right thing and shut the fuck up. <laughs> so does he show up at the press conference tomorrow with headphones on? What does he do? Or does he just sit in the pocket and start saying some crazy shit? Leave the headphones home, Mr. Strickland. Please leave them home. Let it fly. Let's go. I wanna, I'm going to bring the popcorn tomorrow. By the way, the stream is ready to rock. I'm going to drop the stream link in the chat. If you're not subscribed to the channel where you're just a... I mean, I don't know what to say. But um, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed. Hit the notification bell. And here it is. UFC 276 press conference. We're going to play the audio. We're going to give our live reaction. I'm going to drop it in the chat. We'll take some phone calls uh, from the Discord tomorrow. Make sure you go over there and you smash the like button. Share our shit, friends. We need some support from the community. Throw it on your fucking Facebook, your grind, or your Twitter, your Instagram. Throw it out there, friends. Spread the fucking word. Spread the 
disease of the MMA holes. The MMA holes virus. Spread it on the internet. Let's grow this fucking community. Let's get it popping. Saturday's going to be a crazy night as we react to the fights. But tomorrow is the press conference. Go give it a like. I'll see you in a couple of hours. And always remember, don't be an a-hole. Be an M-M-A-hole. Hole.